Uh, welcome to this uh, first interactive session over Zoom. Like I said, uh, uh, this is the first time I'm doing this uh, with more than two people. So fortunately, Mike Packard is here to help me co-host the session. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. Uh, I'll try to uh, answer them later <coughs> on. I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous, you know, because the thing is, I've never done this uh, over video. Uh, I've done many workshops and lectures for more than a few hundred people. I was even on Dutch national TV a few years ago, so I'm cool with that, but this is something different. It's a little bit intimidating, I have to admit. So if I uh, do something stupid, it's because of that. Uh, so let me see the, the final waiting room. Uh, are, are you going to take care of that, uh, Mike? Mike is still there, hopefully. Yeah. So, Mike, if you can hear me, uh, I don't know if you can see the waiting room, and please admit all the, 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 the people in the waiting room. So, I'm going to share my screen. I see, I see, I see uh, this is Justin Mulder, right? That's Justin. Yeah, Hello, Justin. Hello. I don't know why I see you so prominently on my screen, but perhaps maybe because you're one of my biggest fans. Uh, I don't know. But... <laughs> I certainly am. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. You're more than welcome. So, I'm going to share my screen first. Okay, here we go with the first, uh, well, I'm going to start off with a few announcements first. Let me see if I can do this the right way. So this is my, okay, and I'm always struggling with those stupid presentations. Okay, so what I'm going to do today with for the uh, uh, beginners uh, session is to go uh, walk you through all of the uh, features briefly. I'm also going to explain the different workflows for the panel. I'm also going to demonstrate the recommended workflow without the hard selections. So I'll be going into the, uh, the hard selections later on. Uh, and also uh, using uh, freeform selections, so without any pre-made hard selections. Uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, the creating depth and restore features and a little bit about split toning. Also, I need to emphasize that uh, this is not about creating mass. The Black and White Answer Pro X panel is not about creating mass. So that's going to be another session. And since that is going to be a very extensive and, uh, well, very long session, some, something around two and a half hours, I'm going to do that later in May. And unfortunately, I have to ask a, a small fee for that. So if you're interested for that, uh, interested in that, just have a look at my website because I'm going to be announcing that, but I can promise you that uh, the, the masking methods that I'm going to explain to you then are very, very uh, advanced. And uh, most of them you've never seen before. It's a, a self-developed method. So more about that uh, on my website later on. And why do I see this screen? Okay, I'm not sure why I'm seeing this uh, big screen right now. I'm losing my focus here. Okay, so next page. So some practical mat matters first. Uh, the session will take around one and a half hours. Can take a half hour longer. I hope you don't mind uh, that. It depends a little bit on the questions asked. So I'll be doing four or five demos, depending on the time. So when I start with the demonstration, uh, each demonstration can take up between 10 to 20 minutes. And uh, if I'm doing those demonstrations, please, try not to ask anything. Uh, you'll be allowed to ask questions after each cycles, a cycle of demos, okay? And hopefully Mike uh, Packard can take care of that as well. Of course, I'm going to be answering the questions myself. Um, so, have a little drink. So what I'm going to be doing today before we get started with the, uh, with the panel and Photoshop, is to give you a little explanation first uh, about some Photoshop basics to make sure that we are on the same page. So first I need to explain something about channel mask versus layer mask. So I'm going to share my Photoshop screen right now. So please bear with me. Uh, I can do that. Share screen. Okay. All right. So you should be able to see my Photoshop screen right now. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> channel mask and layer mask. First of all, we have the layer mask. I think most of them, um, most of you uh, already know about it. Uh, hopefully, okay, hold on a minute. There's someone waiting in the waiting room. 
Mike Packard is also in the waiting room while he's my co-host. That's strange. <laughs> okay, so I've admitted them all. Mike, are you there? Yes, I got disconnected, but I just got back in. Okay, th th that's very good news for, for someone who's a co-host. <laughs> 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 okay, sorry about this uh, intermezzo, people, but okay, I have to... Mike, can you take a look at the at the waiting room if, and admit anyone who's uh, waiting there? If, if you can, please. So, I'm going to be talking about uh, the difference between a panel mass, or sorry, channel mass and layer mass. So this Joel, is I think you need to, Joel, you think you need to make me a co-host again? Okay. So I got disconnected. Yeah. All right. Okay, let me try doing that again. Make host. <clears throat> okay, Mike, you should be able to co-host the session right now. Got it. Thank you. So, the difference between channel mass and layer mass. So this, when we are sitting in the uh, layer mass, I think most of you already know about that. This is layer mass. But the most important thing in uh, creating mass are the channel mass. So this is a channel mass. So meaning whatever you see here in a channel, so basically this is a stored mask or, and if you load it, it's called a selection. So what you see here is basically something that's pure white, meaning that has been selected and has been revealed, or pure black. And that is something that, uh, that, that is what everything that's concealed. So in this case, if I would load this, let's say it's called cell one, and you would get to see something like this. So select, load selection, cell one, then you would see the selection. So there's a difference also between a selection and a mask. This is a selection, it's basically a loaded mask. And the loaded mask is a channel mask, which is something that is like this. So again, white reveals, black conceals. These are called, also called hard masks. Furthermore, you also have the so-called luminosity mask or what I call soft mask. You can also create them with the Black and White Artisan Pro tool. So if you click on the lights, for example, you will see all the luminosity masks and the light luminosity mass, and if you click on the darks, you will see the dark luminosity mass. So it looks something like this. So you see that here that if you create a luminosity mass, it's not pure white, it's not pure black. So meaning here, for, for, for here, for example, this is, well, I think almost pure white, meaning this will be revealed the most. This is pure black, that will not be revealed at all. This is something like light mid gray, that will only be revealed partially. The darker mid gray for that will be concealed uh, partially and or revealed partially, okay? So the lighter it gets, the more it will be revealed. And the darker it gets, the more it will be concealed. So that's the difference between a hard mask and a soft mask. This is soft mask or a luminosity mask. And the other was a hard mask. It's pure white, pure black, okay? Uh, so that's about the difference between channel mass and layer mass. Okay, I forgot to say this. So this is a layer mass. So for example, if I would load selection one, for example, and I would do this. Okay, so if it, hold on a minute, I have to set it to normal. If I would do this, see that a mask over here, if you click on the mask, one minute. Oh, I'm, on, I'm on a different computer right now, so oh, there it is, yeah. So if you look at this right now, you see that now black will actually, cons uh, so, sorry, will actually reveal what's below this layer. So here in, and in, in, in a layer mask uh, configuration, you will see that black is actually the, the, qu quite the opposite. So it reveals what's below this, this layer. If you, if you click on here, you see that, right? And, and white, in this case, conceals. But it will reveal what's in this actual layer, but it will <coughs> conceal what's below here. Okay, so this is a little bit uh, confusing. I know that and uh, people mix up channel mass and layer mass quite often. So I, I think it's very important to keep the terminology correct. Okay, so I'm saying when I talk about mask, I usually talk about channel mass not about layer mass, okay? So this is about uh, channel masks and layer masks. So I'm now going to go to the next topic. 
Uh, I've already uh, explained this about the hard mass versus luminous mass. I'm not sure what screen you can see right now. You can still see my Photoshop screen, correct? I see your face. You see my face. Okay, I need to reshare it again. So forgive me my clumsiness, but it's, uh, there we go. Share screen again. That's the only downside of uh, Zoom. You always have to uh, share the screen uh, every time you, you switch uh, screens. So hard mass versus luminous mass I've already explained. The layer panel versus channel panel I've also already explained, right? I mean, the layer panel is the panel where you all do, do all your adjustments. The channel panel is where you create your mass and store your mass, manage your mass. Whether they're hard mass or soft max, mass, it doesn't matter. So that's the, 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 the main purpose of your uh, channel panel versus the layer panel. Okay, <clears throat> is, that, is that clear till now? The difference between layer panel and channel panel. Layer panel is for editing, adjustments in Photoshop, the real editing, while channel panel is mostly used for storing mass, creating mass, etc. That is still clear, right? Yeah. So let me talk a little bit about the zones of luminance values and the notation of them, because this is also a very important aspect of my panel, so I need to say something about it. So first of all, I'm going to go into this screen. So you should be able to dis see this screen with the tonal zones and luminance values. So I think most of you already know that you can, uh, let's say, uh, uh, separate and split up the, the entire tonal zones into 11 zones, right? Zone zero up to zone 10. Famous uh, zone system from An Ansel Adams. So basically zone zero represents all the luminance values between zero and 23. I'll get into that a little bit later on. And then you have zones one, zone two, zone three, etc. So basically these are called the shadow zones most of the times. You also have the mid-tone zones represented by zone four, five, and six. So basically anything between luminance value 93 and 161. And then you also have the light zones representing zone seven up to 10. And those are the lightest value, the brightest values, where 255 is, to, is pure white. And these are the darkest values where uh, zero represents pure black. Okay. So a little bit more about this. So I'm going to share another screen yet again. Hold on a minute. Stop share, reshare. This one over here. So what you see here, are the tonal sounds over here. So basically the same, uh, same kind of scheme as what, uh, what I showed you earlier. Uh, now look at the annotation. So this, for example, zone zero represents uh, RGB value zero, 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 up to 23, 23, 23. That's a zone one, so, sorry, zone zero, okay? You can also write it like this. If you see this, L, uh, sorry, uh, zero, 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 you can also write it like this, L0, that, sorry, not that, L0, like this, okay? That's, that's, that's a short notation of that. And for example, L255, let you see there, you can write it like this. So instead of saying 255, 255, 255, you just say 255, L255. That's a short notation. And why do we do it, do it like this? If you look here, the RGB values, you'll see that if all RGB values are the same, it's going to be a, a grayscale value, a black and white value. You can recognize that immediately because all values or RGB values are the same. So if you have something like this, three, five, and eight, it means it's a color value. You can immediately recognize that, right? So if they're all the same, they're called, for example, three, 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 this is black and white value. So that is a value that, somewhere around here in the zone zero, and you can also write it like L3. Okay, so th this is the short notation. So if, if I talk about L3, luminance value three, I'm talking about that. Okay, so I need to say a little bit more about that. So hold on a second. Uh, so sorry for this introduction, but I really need to explain this first. And I'm going to open another photo. All right, and I'm going to share another screen. Stop share. Share screen. 
So this is an example of uh, a grayscale image, one of my award-winning photographs. I think, I won, uh, well, I'm not, I don't think so, but I'm sure that I won first prize with this in 2014 at the IPA, International Photography Awards for Professionals. So if you look here, uh, you will see uh, a grayscale image, obviously. And I just want to discuss the importance of the, the nuances in grayscale values. So for example, when I talk about zone zero, in the analog era, people would always say, okay, just try to avoid uh, zone zero because you start with, uh, let's say zone one, if you want to develop your photographs. I think people who are who have worked in the, in the analog era will know about that. So usually zone zero is quite useless. But in the digital era, it's very, it's very, very useful because you can see all the, the, the different values in zone zero. So for example, if you look at this area over here, what do you guys guess in what zone th uh, that is? And what, ki uh, what kind of luminous value does this represent? What do you guys think? Is it pure black? Is it, uh, well, I think most of people will, will agree that it's zone zero, right? Anyone, uh, what do you think is a pure black or is it, are there all sorts of nuanced values in there? Anyone? I think there are values in there. Say that again. I think that there is maybe very low value. Okay, do you think there's there, there something visible in there? Yeah. Yes. No. It's, it's too dark, right? Yes, you can see. Okay, so if I go in here, <clears throat> Okay, so, and I'm going to look at my RGB values over there. So you'll see that, for example, that I'm going to have to click on here. I'll click here. You see that, that that's seven. So that's not pure black, right? It's not pure mm -hmm. black. If I look here, it's 11. If I look here, it's 15, okay? So it's all in zone zero. In the, in, the, in the analog era, which we would say, okay, you, you cannot see anything there. But if I zoom in here, I'm going to zoom in. Go here. I hope you guys can see it. You can see the cables here, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. This here, for example, is a, a stonal value, nine, eight, we'll take a few samples, 12, okay? Just look here at the at the info box over there, and if I click on on the cable, so I'm going to zoom in even even more. You'll see that it, it is seven, and while the adjacent value in the sky is something like well eight nine. So it's a it's a very minimal difference, right? Something like two uh, luminance values, and they're all in zone zero, but still you can see the details there. So this is a very important. This very important uh, uh, information, you know, because things I always work with those minimal values. So people look at my image and see, okay, this is a black sky, but actually it's not black. It's you can uh, actually see a lot of differences. So subtlety <coughs> is is a key part of my workflow. It's also uh, an important key part of the panel. So everything you do with the panel is 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 built around the idea of creating subtle changes. So I'm going to stack up all the subtle changes upon each other to come up with a, fa with a final result. That's hopefully also a, a, a subtle result. So subtlety is key and you can work in zone zero. You can absolutely work in zone zero in the digital age. Never forget about that. So don't go with, uh, with, with the idea of, okay, zone zero, I cannot do anything with it. You can do a lot there. And, and that's also what separates my images with most of the in, with most of the architecture images that you see on the internet, because I work in zone zero and I also work in zone one. So, if you look here, for example, what do you guys think? In, uh, what zone this part is? The clouds over here. You can see the clouds, right? Can you give a a, a guess? Anyone? Zone five. Low low mid tone. Three or four? Zone, zone, yeah, maybe zone three. Zone, zone three? Two, zone three. Zone two, two zone three. three. So we're talking about this, right? Okay, so, so don't look at the info box just yet, okay? But that, that those clouds. Zone three, four? Anyone higher? 
or lower? I would say lower. Mm. Low two. Three. Low two. Three. Okay, would anyone three. say higher than zone four? Zone six. Zone six, okay, higher zone six. Oh, clouds, yes, I agree. Okay, higher zone in the midtown. Okay, high zone six, lowest zone two. So let me about one, 100, 110 across. Okay, okay. Let, let me take a sample over here. That is 32, that's zone one. 32. So you wouldn't say that, right? I mean, this looks more like somewhere in the midtones. Yeah. This is this is 32. This is zone one. 32. 27. That's close to zone zero. So what I'm trying to say here, <laughs> you can reveal a lot of detail in zone zero, but also zone one. While they would start in zone one in the analog era. So that that is an important difference with the analog era. You can do so much with zone zero and zone one only. <clears throat> okay. So if you, if you think about creating subtle images uh, in Photoshop, think about those subtleties that you can get even when working in those darker zones that usually people would completely ignore. You can do it all there. So there's a contrast between this and that, and it's enough to create those subtle, uh, subtle clouds there. While most people would go with, let's say something that's very black here, let's say so, the luminance value zero or one, and go with something very bright that's in zone 10. But what you do then is create an enormous contrast and that will actually distract from the actual object matter in here, or subject matter, what you want to call it. Because that is the bridge. And if you look here, if it, it would take a sample there, you would see that it's 238. That's something like zone nine, maybe already even 10, right? So the, the highest values over there. Okay, now go, going back to the uh, presentation again. Uh, there we go. Going back to here. So is that also clear about the the zones, the importance of the uh, of the subtlety in in those zones, especially in zone zero? Is is it also clear about the annotation? How I notate that? Yes. Anyone have yeah. any objections? Nope. <laughs> Okay, so now a little bit about creating depth because that is also a very important feature in my panel. So let me go there and then I'm going to talk about conversion and post -pro and post processing, the difference between conversion and post processing and act and then finally my file management and then I go do the demonstration in Artisan Pro X. I hope you guys don't mind my uh, introduction about this and I hope you can appreciate that. Hold on a minute. Okay. It's always a problem with this. So first of all, okay, I'm going to move it that way. First of all, uh, selective contrast and creating depth. Those are two very important principles in my workflow and also in my panel. So what I always try to do when creating a black and white photograph is first of all, uh, think about the selective contrast to emphasize shapes and forms and to let's say uh, distract from all the uh, non-important elements in my photograph. So if you look here, you will see that this has a selective contrast. So when we talk about good black and white photography, we're not talking about global contrast. We're talking actually about selective contrast. Because if you would, if I would only mind the global contrast, then you would see those clouds in the background very bright. You would see those buildings in the background also very contrasty. But I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is to basically remove all the contrast in the background and make sure that my main object or what I call the figure in the figure ground uh, relationship. This is my figure. This is my most important object, my photograph. That has the highest selective contrast, meaning it has the brightest light and it has the highest contrast. So if you look here, for example, this is almost, well, it's very white. And if you look here, this is a very dark area. So the contrast is highest over here. So that's the way to lead the eye into the specific parts of your image. Okay, so the highest contrast and the brightest light. So here, this will get all the attention while this part will not get any attention at all because there's almost no contrast there, right? And there's almost no light there. If you look here, then you see that uh, let's say this part of the building in the background 
has been darkened deliberately by, by me. Why? Because I want to accentuate the, the road on the, uh, of the bridge. You see that? that? That is light, this is dark. So you create a high selective contrast, leading the eye effectively into the image itself, into the uh, most important figure itself in the, in the photo. Okay, so selective contrast. So that is a very important aspect of my, of my work. And apart from that, there's also another important aspect in my work and that's, and that's why don't I see anything now? Okay, hold on a minute. I thought there were, there was an error processing page. Oh, great news, hold on a minute. <laughs> Sorry guys, I have to open the, the page again. Uh, that's not fun, hold on a minute. Okay. Are you guys seeing my screen again? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So this was the last page that you saw, right? Okay. Yep. So uh, another important aspect of my work is not only creating selective contrast in a very smart way, using the tonal zones in a very nuanced and smart way, using all luminous values, even in the darkest zones, but also about, it's also about creating depth. So the thing is, the perception of depth can only take place in the color part and colorblind part of the brain. Okay, that is something that, that I didn't make up, but uh, neuroscientists have discovered that. So when you perceive depth in real life, you can only perceive that in, in the black and white part of your brain. You don't do that with color. So if anyone says something like, okay, uh, I like this beautiful uh, color photo because it has so much depth. Actually, that's nonsense because you cannot see depth with, <laughs> with, 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 through colors. You cannot. It's always a matter of uh, uh, processing information in the colorblind part of your brain. It's, it's a monochromatic affair, so to speak, okay? So when you perceive that, it's something that you do it in the black and white part of your brain. That's also one of the reasons that I like to create uh, black and white images, because it's easy to create depth if you only see those luminance values and the difference between luminance values instead of uh, seeing the difference in luminance values and at the same time see the difference in color tones or hues. So what creates that? Of course, what can create that is the, the use of perspective lines, but most importantly, a correct and gradual solid transition from dark to light and vice versa. That is the main thing that creates depth in any kind of image. Whether you're talking about a color photo or a black and white photo, it's that subtle transition from dark to light or the other way around that uh, increases, enhances enormously the perception of depth. And that's basically a difference between luminance values, not between color tones, but luminance values. So the, the more subtle that transition is, the better it looks, okay? So that is also a very important aspect of my panel. That's why I created this entire section called Creating Depth. It's all about this very subtle and gradual transition from dark to light and vice versa. But the thing is here, there's an issue in Photoshop. It, it's a very well-known issue in Photoshop. The, the more subtle your transitions, the more nuanced your transitions and the, the more subtle the difference between luminous between adjacent luminance values, the more you increase the, uh, well, the, the chance of uh, banding in your photograph. It's, it's a very familiar and well-known thing. It's an issue that has been addressed by Photoshop many, many times. And the only solution that they gave up to now is to add a little bit of noise. It is most definitely a Photoshop issue that is very well known. So the more subtle your, your, your tones, the higher the chances of, of banding. But the thing is, uh, I would always create solid images, okay? Because that is very important to me. At the same time, there's also a difference between fake banding and real banding. Meaning if you, okay, I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Share my screen in Photoshop over here. The thing is the following. Usually you would see banding in the photograph like this, for, uh, in, especially in the sky where, where the transitions are very subtle, right? 
but what you see on your screen is not always real banding. What Photoshop does is actually downscale your 16 bits image to eight bits when you see it like this. If you wanna see the real photograph in its full 16 bits glory, you have to zoom in to 100%. Okay, I'm trying to do that. Hold on a minute. Like this. So you actually have to zoom in to 100% to be able to see the real banding. If there's no banding, then actually it's just a downscale, upscale kind of issue in Photoshop. So there's no banding at all. So always keep that in mind, okay? If you wanna make sure you have real banding, zoom in to 100% first, because then it will be presented in 16 bits again. And in that case, of course, you don't have to add any noise. But if you still see the banding at 100%, then add some noise, just a little bit. Usually I would add a little bit of noise like 0.8 or 0.9%, okay? Also, and that, this is also something that I re discovered recently, uh, it makes a difference if you're looking at your image on a MacBook Pro, for example, or, or a Mac Mini or a Windows computer. So what I've discovered is that uh, I would see banding on a Windows computer. I would say see banding on my MacBook Pro, but I wouldn't see any banding with the same exact photograph on a Mac Mini, for example, which is qu quite weird, right? I don't have any answer to that. That is something that, uh, that maybe hopefully uh, Photoshop and Adobe can address, but it, it's a strange difference. So be aware of that. So even though you might still see some banning on your MacBook Pro or your Windows computer, it might actually not be there. So, you know, it, it's, it's very hard to, to, to know whether you have real banning or not. But at the least you can do is to zoom it at 100%. And if you don't see any banning, you're quite good, okay? And if you see some banning, I would always say, add a little bit of noise because it interrupts the pattern, the pixel pattern, the, the light intensity pattern, and it will get rid of the noise very, sorry, get rid of the banding quite effectively. All right, back to my presentation. Share screen again. So it's all about the gradual transition from dark to light and light to dark, but also it's about identifying edges and increasing or decreasing contrast in and around the edges. So, so that, those two things, correct and gradual transition from dark to light and vice versa, and identifying edges and increasing or decreased contrast in and around the edges, those two things make up for creating presence, as, uh, as, as, as it has been called by uh, George Wolf. And I think also Ansel Adams talked about creating presence uh, back in those days. But when they talk about creating presence or creating depth, it's actually about those, those two things. So what do I mean with identifying edges and increasing or decreasing contrast in and around the edges? Going back to Photoshop again. Are you guys still enjoying this session or do you think it's boring? No, <laughs> no not at all. Oh, very interesting. Okay. I'm sorry that I didn't get into the uh, Artisan Pro X panel just yet, but that will happen in a few seconds, okay? So what do I mean with that, with creating depth in and around the edges? So I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need that anymore. Delete. So deselect. So this is the original color file. And it, uh, you guys have uh, received this from me and hopefully you've already played a little bit with it. But if you look at, the, at here, for example, you see that uh, this is a Salk Institute in San Diego, by the way, in La Jolla. I think Mike Packard knows about it. It's a very beautiful, great uh, location. Uh, it's, uh, it makes me feel zen when I, whenever I'm there. In any case, the thing is, if you look here, there's, the image looks quite flat. This comes straight out of the camera, by the way. So when I create depth, I'm doing something like this. Okay, this is before, this is after. So notice that are two things uh, that you can see here. First of all, the perception of depth, uh, created by the transition from dark to light in a very subtle way, over here as well, over here as well. If you compare that with, let's say this, it looks flat, right? It's, there's almost no volume, no dimension, okay? But not only that, 
what I also do is to identify those edges, right? And increase the contrast there a little bit more to separate it from the other objects in that, uh, in, in all the different uh, planes. Mm. Yeah, so it's all about dark to light, light to dark transition in a very subtle way. And at the same time about identifying edges and increasing or decreasing the contrast in there. Uh, because the thing is, suppose that, uh, that this wall over there would be the, uh, well, it is the farthest uh, object pr uh, seen from the observer. So what I would usually do to increase the perception of depth is not only to uh, make it less dark. So usually objects farthest away from the viewer are always less dark, less contrasty, a little bit more fuzzy and soft, okay? So what I would do that is to decrease the contrast around those edges a little bit more. I mean, if you look here, you see that the contrast heat between this and that is less than over here, right? So th that's an example of decreasing contrast to increase the perception of depth. And again, it's all about uh, uh, the fact that objects closest to you are always the darkest, are always the highest contrast, are always the most detailed, while objects the farthest away from you are always lowest in contrast, fuzzy, soft, <coughs> sorry, light, uh, just name it, okay? So there you have to decrease the depth perception by, uh, let's say, uh, 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 decreasing the, the, the contrast in and around the edges. Is this all clear till now? Because yes. th th this is very important information yep. that I uh, need, really needed to share with you before I s even start with the uh, Artisan Pro X panel. Any questions up till now? So in the meantime, we can have a quick drink, okay? Because uh, my throat is getting really dry over here. I'm not taking any beer, but just uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, are you going to deal with that kind of how you make any of the selections and save them as well? Uh, I, I didn't hear that. Uh, um, it's Rosie here. Are you going to deal with how you make any of the selections and save them? How do I do that? Are you going to deal with that on this lecture? <coughs> Uh, sorry, how am I going to deal with selection? I, I didn't hear that correctly because it's really soft. She's asking if you're going to talk about how you make selections. Oh, okay, how I make selections. Okay, sorry about that. Um, about that, but uh, well, I'm going to do a, do a short demonstration. But actually, the creation of hard selections is actually a very uh, extensive process for me to be able to 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 explain it uh, in a, a good an uh, extensive way, it would take me two and a half hours, okay? But uh, I'm trying to talk about selections in, in, in a separate se uh, session, uh, like it said in the beginning of this uh, presentation. Um, and at the same time, I'm also trying to give you a taste of what, what I usually would do with uh, selection using this panel at the end of this uh, demonstration. So if you are willing to wait longer than let's say, uh, uh, than let's say, one and a half hour, uh, feel free to stay here and then again do some some short demonstration with the with masking techniques, okay? But it's going to be a short demonstration, okay? It's going to be really fast because there's just not enough time to explain it here, all right? Thank you. Okay, so uh, no more questions about the, the introduction? No. Okay. Joel, this is Mike. Hello, Mike. Some of the some of the people are having trouble downloading the Dropbox files, and I just want to say to them, one of the files is very very large. You have to wait for it to get to your computer before you click on it. I think that's the problem. one. I've put the link into the chat. Please try it again. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so. Now a little bit about the conversion for post processing and a little bit about my file management system because that's also very important because a lot of people think that my workflow is destructive. It actually is non-destructive. It's actually quite smart, but I've written an article about it on my, on, my, on my website. So please, if you're interested in the how and why of my workflow, just please take a look at my uh, latest article, article on my website. It's about destructive, non-destructive editing. Okay, but what I can tell you about that is, is uh, uh, I will do it in a few minutes. But first, okay, I'm not going to, okay, this is what we need to see. So the difference between uh, conversion and process processing. So this, for example, this is my Salk Institute photo in color. This is the neutral conversion 
without any adjustment at all. This is the, these, this is the first year with the, uh, all the adjustments. So I make a difference between uh, pure conversion like this, and usually the, pure, the only pure conversion for me is the black and white neutral conversion. Because what I do there is just trans, it's just, let's say, remove the colors and leave the luminance values as they were in the original color photo. I don't change any of the luminance values. There, I know that there are a lot of people that, who are doing, uh, let's say, the, the conversion and the adjustment at the same time. So, for example, they would play with the, with, the, with, the blue, with the color sliders or they would play with the curves while they're uh, converting the image to black and white. I would recommend not doing that. I would always go with the neutral conversion, okay, and then adjust the photo. So, this is the conversion. This is the actual post-processing. Okay, I don't know what this is doing here, but this is an example of one of my photos. <laughs> okay, so here, again, the color straight out of the camera file. You can see all the people there with all the handbags, the, 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 the street vendors with the handbags and cars. Uh, this is the black and white neutral conversion. So I didn't do anything, just translated from color to black and white without adjusting, <coughs> sorry, the luminance values. And this one is with all the, uh, the adjustments applied. So I Excuse didn't me, Joel, yes. We're not seeing. We're looking at the Salt Institute black and white. Oh, why yeah. is that? Okay, hold on a minute. Uh, why is that now? Okay, let me try to share it again. Maybe that will help. Can you see the screen with the Pantheon and Rome? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. I don't know what happened, but anyway. So this is the, uh, the Pantheon and Rome color straight out of the camera. Uh, the black and white neutral conversion where I didn't change any, uh, uh, where I didn't do any luminance value adjustments, just pure translation from color to black and white without any adjustment. And this is the actual post processing. Okay. So I want to scroll. Okay, you've already seen this, and that that's the same the same story over there. Okay. Okay. I hope this is clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. a little bit about my file management. <laughs> okay. And this, uh, this is the last part. And then I mean, really go into Photoshop. Okay. Uh, sorry, into the black and white arts and pro panel. So typically, okay, hold on a minute. I'm going to share this screen with you again. Uh, this. Can you see this, uh, my file system? Yeah. yeah. Folder? yeah. Good. So this is one photo. It has 50, major iterations. So typically, what I would do if I work in the Photoshop with my panel, I would do a few adjustments, few uh, adjustments related to a specific area in my image. Let's say I'm going to work on the sky. Let's say the top part of the sky. I would do maybe 20, 25 adjustments, okay? I would, I would merge layers, and then I would save it as, let's say, black and white two, for example, okay? Then I go work on the midsection of the sky, or let's say a part of a building, one plane, one side of a building, and only that. Then I would save it as, then I would do the same thing. I would, let's say, do 50, sometimes even 100 adjustments, very small, subtle adjustments. I would merge them down. I would save it like this. I would do, call it black and white iteration number two. And then I would go like that, up to something like 50, okay? And then that's going to be my final image. What I keep then uh, when I'm done is the original uh, raw file. It's not in here, by the way, the, the color selection file. So I would typically uh, have one separate color file that I didn't adjust at all that contains all hard selection, meaning all channel masks. Okay. And, uh, if, and, and, and apart from that, nothing more, just all channel masks. I would never save them in one of my black and white files. The reason for that is that your file can, can become quite huge, right? I mean, you can use these, these PSB files and there's actually no limit to what Photoshop PSB files can handle. You can go up to, up to a few terabytes, I think. I don't know how, how much anymore, but it's quite, quite uh, unlimited. But the thing is, as soon as you're working with more than four or five gigabyte files, you're going to encounter lots of issues, okay? Because you go, your, your computer performance is going to be quite affected. 
So that's the reason that I, that I created this workflow. And this is also the way that I work with a panel. Okay, so you don't see me doing this when I'm working with a panel, but uh, in, in real life, I would always save those iterations. Okay, just keep that in mind because this is really important to understand that this is not a, a destructive workflow, but actually a very intelligent workflow to be able to work with even 200 mega, uh, uh, megabit, mag, megabyte fi megapixel files uh, and, and still be able to, well, to work on an old computer, okay? So this is the last thing that I said about uh, this. Now I'm going to start with uh, the fun part. Okay, sorry about that guys. So first of all, a quick introduction to, to Black and White Odyssey Pro. So any questions up to now? No. No? So this panel is basically designed to automate my manual workflow that I've been teaching since 2011. I developed it in 20, 2009, 2010. And at some point uh, a few years ago, I decided to automate all the things that I did in that manual workflow. So uh, a brief overview. First of all, you have those, those quick uh, access buttons over there. Okay, basically they're, they're straight uh, shortcuts to, uh, to, to normal uh, features in Photoshop. So they're nothing special. They're just there for your comfort, okay? The Pro Tools, okay, this is something very interesting. Uh, this is something that I'm going to discuss quite extensively in the advanced session. I know many of you, are, uh, if you are already signed up for this beginner section, are not going to be invited for the advanced session, but uh, I'm considering to add all of you guys uh, also to that advanced session, if you're interested, okay? And that's next week, next week's Sunday. So if you, if you're interested in, 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 in attending that session as well, uh, please send me an email, okay? There's someone in the uh, chat box. Okay, uh, I think, uh, okay, Mike is taking care of that. So the Pro Tools section, I'm going to uh, discuss in detail in, in the next session. But look at this. These are very, well, uh, interesting presets. They're the Luminosity Mass and they're, you can find them in and actually any other panel like Tony Kuiper's panel or uh, what's called the Lumin, Lumin, Luminanza, Luminantia, uh, I've got the name, from, from Greg Benz, okay? Luminantia. Lum, oh, sorry, Luminantia, okay. So there are, most panels uh, will give you this kind of feature with which you can create luminosity. So nothing special about that, okay? So uh, this is just a, an added bonus feature in my, uh, in my panel. This is something else, okay? This, uh, I'm going to explain it later on, but the normal adjustments is basically, uh, well, you can, you can adjust something in here. For example, uh, I would do this, okay? And I can darken it like this, for example, okay? This, uh, I wouldn't do it on the sky over here, but you can darken it like that. But this represents D1, dark one. D2 is, uh, is of course dark too. This is 25%, this is 50%, 75, 100%, and the same for the lights. So when, whenever you see a one in my panel, it means 25%. Two, 50, three, 75, four, it's usually 100%. And the L represents the light, uh, the lightning presets. Okay, D darkening presets. This is very similar to that. Okay, but this works in a very specific way. It won't affect, uh, the pure black values, and it won't affect the pure white values. So it will only affect values that are in between uh, L0 or L and, and L25. If it's L0 or L25, you cannot affect this, okay? So let me try to show you that. I don't know if I have the file over here. Uh, no, sorry, I'm not, I don't have that file over here. But this is very useful for masking, okay? That's what I already want to say. So this basically, what I would call are add and amplify presets, while this are amplify presets only. So usually if you have something that is pure white or pure black, you first have to give it a tone somewhere in between L0 or L25. You do that with this because this is add and amplify. And before you can do this, okay? Because this is amplify. Okay, I'll explain that later. But just first a quick, a quick walkthrough. 
these are microsomes. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm going to get rid of that thing there. Microsomes. Basically, there's, they're more or less the same as a uh, luminosity mass. But it, uh, what you see here, for example, if I click on that, I can just click zone, zone one. And then you will see that I've created this. There are three channels in there. If you know how to use zones, if you know how to use luminosity mass, you will also know how to create zones. So for example, if I compare zone, uh, let's say the zone one channels. So those are three microsome masks that you can use to isolate specific areas in your image. Uh, so, and if you compare that with, let's say, uh, the light, the normal luminosity mass like this, it's different, right? Because this will cover, if, if, uh, if I click on lights one or lights two, for example, this will cover anything from, let's say, zone, what is it, uh, zone eight up to 10. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Okay, uh, was that a question or? I'm not sure if that was a question or not. But. You you can mute all your people. There's something on it where you can click mute everybody, and then to get off of the mute, you just press your space bar when you want to speak. Okay, uh, I don't see mute mute everybody. Only I, I only see the, the button mute me, but I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> Mike, if you know how to mute them all, uh, please do so. Yes, did it. Okay. That was about the luminosity mass and the, the, the zones. Okay, you can play with it. Uh, if you want to get rid of it, just click on the, the, the minus button over there. Okay, then you can get rid of those. Okay, plus is create, minus is delete. Okay, so uh, the black and white conversions, again, I would only use this. If you, are, if you like to play an experiment, you can also use all the other uh, presets. But basically, this is not a pure uh, conversion, but it's a conversion together with some adjustments. And especially for uh, those buttons that you see over there, those are very ex uh, advanced uh, presets. So it consists of, let's say, a, a neutral conversion, and on top of that, many, many other steps to come up with the specific results, even using luminosity mask in, the, in those sequences. So if you like to play with it, feel free to do that, but I would always recommend to go with the neutral conversion. Uh, then you also have a black and white generator. So if, if you think, okay, you know what, what I, I need some inspiration and I cannot find any inspiration over here, just click on the black and white generator and it will create any random black and white conversion and adjustment for you, okay? So you can go with finite subtle, high contrast, high key, whatever. So it will, uh, it's, it's, it's not a, a, a preset kind of thing, you know? It's, it's not prefixed. So it, whenever you create a, a click on fine art, it will create several versions of the same photograph. Okay, so you can also play with that. But again, I would always recommend playing with the neutral, doing the neutral conversion only. Uh, the global adjustment, well, the name already indicates it, it's, uh, it has an impact on the entire image, okay? And uh, these are very nice tools. And actually, this, uh, as, uh, by panel, started in 2016 with, uh, with only the global adjustments in there and a few split downs. So basically, these are very outdated and this is a, a very, uh, let's say, simple uh, levels adjustment. If you click on this, for example, okay, I'm going to do that. Highlights will actually stretch out your histogram on the right hand side of your histogram. Uh, shadows will stretch out the histogram on the left hand side of the histogram and tonality will stretch it out on both sides. It's basically about global contrast. A very simple preset, nothing special, okay? Uh, these are uh, meant to uh, target specific zones, okay? Darkening or lightening them, uh, lightening or darkening them, okay? The highlight zones, so basically anything between seven, zone seven and 10, mid-tones, anything between four and seven, and all the rest with the shadows. They're, again, they're not very advanced presets, but they can be quite useful. The thing that I use the most is this. I would use it all the time. That's a global contrast. So basically what you do here, this is actually a curve setting, okay? It creates a sort of an S curve. But I, I don't use that. I usually use this or that. What I use this for is to 
for example, if I would do that here, I would click on black and white conversion, neutral, okay. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to get rid of this. Hold on a minute, I'm going to get rid of this again. So, so I have absolute neutral. So suppose that I go to move it that way, that way. So suppose that I want to remove the contrast and sky and at the same time darken it. I would always use the uh, global adjustment low key uh, tool for that. So, you, so in this case, I've already made an, uh, a selection. Okay, I'm going to load the, the sky in here. Okay, and then I would click on low key and then I can move the slider all the way to the right and then you can darken it and at the same time remove some of the contrast there. Okay. Uh, I would always recommend not using it more than two passes, maybe even two and a half passes. That would be the maximum, you know, because the thing is, if you, if you use it uh, uh, for, for uh, too many passes, you're going to lose the detail in there. Okay. It's going to look too flat. So two, two and a half passes, that's okay. But two and a half, I mean 50%, okay? Mid-key does the same, but it keeps it a little bit lighter. So whenever you want to remove the contrast, so when I talk about removing contrast, I would always start off with this. I would give it two passes, and then I, uh, I would remove the contrast and then darken it, okay? So this, this is my most used presets, those two over here. So when you think about global adjustments, always think about removing contrast and using this low key or mid key tool. Okay. Get rid of that. Advanced adjustments. Okay. Again, uh, you see the D1s to D4. Again, representing 25, 50, 75, etc. Same with lights. You see the smart linear default and you see the smart linear strict. Default means that it's, it, it, it's what I would always use. And what, what it does is that uh, it creates a smooth transition from, uh, from uh, let's say from a specific area. Let's say if I do this, then you will see that it will create a smooth transition from here to there. So it will bleed over the edge. Okay, to enable that smooth transition. So if I would darken that with let's say do D2, you see that it bleeds over the edge to enable that smooth transition. Okay, so this is before, this is after. Strict means it stays within the edges. Okay, so if I get rid of this, if I click on, let's say, D2 strict, it does the same, so it creates this solid transition uh, through a feathering. Okay, but also another correction, and that's behind the screens. So if you click this, you will see that it stays as much as possible within the edges, okay? Th there's a less smooth transition. So usually I would use this if I'm working on still life, for example, I want to stay within the flower, I would use strict. If I need something that can, uh, can, have a, uh, can tolerate a more solid transition, like in landscapes, I would use the default, okay? Smart linear with pre-created mass. So this is something that has been, uh, let's say, actually outdated. So because now we can do the creating depth things. Okay, but if you want to use it, uh, go back here again. So what you need to have then is already a pre-created hard mass. So I can click on D2 if I want to darken the sky. So let's click on D2. But then it asks for a hard mass to be loaded. Okay, so I can click on that. And now you can, I'm darkening the sky, but it, darkens it globally. So meaning it's, it's, it's linear, so it, it will be equally darkened here as there. While with the creating depth, it will go from a specific direction from dark to light or light to dark. It's a gradation, okay? That's the big difference between this and that. These are always gradients, okay? Dark to light, light to dark in a very subtle way. Well, this is linear. Is this clear up to now? Yeah, I give, I give you a few, a yeah. few seconds. I'm going to drink something. Okay. Also, when you have mass, it's always good to, uh, I mean, if I look at, at my mass, for example, over here, the sky. If you, uh, if, if we're talking about hard mass, 
then of, obviously you need to have something that's pure white or pure black. So meaning this will be revealed. This will be concealed, right? So I'm going to display the sky. And do, I can do all the adjustments in the sky. But it's always recommended to come up with a sort of feathering of the, especially for the critical selection. What do I mean with the critical selections? What I mean with the critical selection is any kind of selection that isolates figure from ground. So figure is always your most important object in your image. The ground's anything else. It's not only the foreground or the background, it's anything else that's not your main object in your image. That's the ground. So, if, so that is the critical selection. The, the selection that separates figure from ground. Okay, and usually, in most cases, especially in architectural landscape, the critical selection is the sky. Because it's, it, it, I mean, if your main object is a, is a, is a mountain, for example, then uh, if you want to separate it from, from its sky, you know, th then that is the, uh, the critical selection because it, uh, it, it is about your, uh, it's about your mountain, right? So in those critical selections, I would always recommend to load the selection. So I'm going to, so you've created the, the mask like in here, okay? So I would load the selection sky, for example, and then I would always do a little bit of feathering. So I would go into se select the mask, for example. Okay, select the mask. And then I would go with a feathering of something around point, well, point 0.8, point 0.9 pixels, okay? It, it depends a little bit on the size of your image, okay, and the size of your selection. So the larger your selection, the larger your image, you can go with the higher uh, feathering. And usually there would be something like 1.1, 1.2. You have to experiment with it, okay? But for an image like this, I would go with, let's say, 0. Uh, let's say 0. 0.8, like this, okay? So now the, the, the selection has been feathered. You have to save it again, like this, save selection. And then call it, let's say, uh, sky uh, optimized, okay? So when I save it, it will be stored in your channels. You will see the new channel mask over here. There it is. Okay. We select it now. So if I zoom in here, you will see. Sorry, zoom in. Guys, I'm quite positive that it's, that this is going to take longer than one and a half hour. Do you do you guys mind or not? I, I'll, I'll be, I would Great. be happy to sit here for two and a half hours. You know, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Not a so let's, fine. let's make it a marathon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you look at the edges there, this is sky optimized and I'm going to go to my original sky there. You see that this edge is much sharper, right? It's much harder. It will create halos. So it's always uh, recommended to optimize your hard mask and to make the, the edge a little bit more fuzzy, especially, especially for your critical selections, okay? You don't need to do that for, let's say, an internal selection like this one. Okay, going back here. Go. Okay. okay, that's not an internal selection, but uh, let's say this one, okay? But where it doesn't touch the sky, actually it does touch the sky. So this is not a good example, but uh, I think you guys know what I mean, right? I mean, if you look here, I mean, if I would uh, select this and I have that selection there, it's an internal selection because it doesn't uh, uh, intersect with the, with, with, the, with, with, the, with, the, with the critical part of the ground, in this case, the sky, right? So if I find that, uh, where's the thing? There it is. You will see that, that I usually don't feather this because it's not necessary, because it's not critical, okay? So the critical selection is always mostly the sky. Uh, so always try to do some optimization, but the thing is you can also do an automatic optimiza uh, optimization. So instead of doing the manual feathering, you can just, let's say uh, over here, one minute, you go to advanced adjustment and see the load and optimize mass. So it will add, so once you click on one of those buttons, it will ask for a hard mass that you already created. So in this case, it would always go with default and then you can load, let's say the sky again, or let's say take, let's take another one, this one. So when, once you click okay, 
it will be processed. So now it has already been optimized. So you see the marching ants there, that selection. So you have to save it. So save selection and then call it, uh, what was it? Uh, test uh, two, okay? So that one, so that will be stored again with a feathered edge, okay? But again, I wouldn't recommend doing that for internal selections, only for the critical selection where the uh, figure is isolated from the ground, especially when you're dealing with skies and especially when a building's intersecting with the sky. I would always do that. So that's that part. Microsoft adjustments. Okay, so the difference between advanced and Microsoft adjustment. Uh, advanced adjustments, like I already said, is about darkening or lightening specific areas in a seamless way. So for example, I can do it again, but uh, let's, let's say in a, a D2, it will be darkened, okay? Within the selection and will bleed over, uh, over the edges or will bleed over less over the edges, okay? But this, the microsome doesn't darken or lighten uh, globally within the selection, within the target selection. But what it does is darken only the indicated tonal values or lighten the tonal values. So effectively, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a feature to increase or decrease contrast with, because you always have to go with darken and then lighten separately if you want that, okay? So for example, get rid of this. Get rid of that. So suppose that, uh, let me try to find a good example. Um, okay, I'm going to use this example. Suppose that I want to, no, hold on a minute, I'm going to go with the flower. So guys, you can take your flower shot if you want to, because now I'm going to do a little demonstration with this flower as well. So I'll give you a minute. In the meantime, I can, I think it's called flower number two. I skip, sorry, I, I muted the microphone. I said something, but uh, are you got, uh, guys done loading the panel? Sorry, the, the, the image? Yeah, good. Yes. Yeah? Okay. okay, I just want I just want to make sure you guys could hear me. Okay, so uh, let's start with the black and white conversion first, okay? So I would just click on neutral. I didn't make any selections for this image, so just do that and and then you have this kind of thing, this kind of conversion. Okay, I'm going to move you guys a little bit to the side because it's a little bit in the way. So what you can do now, for example, is to go to advanced adjustment and just make it a little bit, let's say, lighter over here. Okay, just grab your lasso tool like this. Okay, just uh, that tool over there. Make sure it's set to uh, the new selection, okay? And then you can click on, let's say, lighting it. Okay, I would go with, uh, I think I'm going to go with a uh, strict because I don't want to bleed it over the edge, okay? You can also go with, with, with the default, but then you're going, there's a chance that it might bleed a little bit over that edge. So I would go with, uh, with strict, I would say an L2. You see, it's, it's going to be lighted in a, in, in, in a beautiful, subtle way, right? I mean, this is before, this is after, okay? You guys can still follow me, right? So now I can go to the uh, microsome adjustments, all right? So what I'm going to do is just target a specific tonal zone and then darken it or lighten it. So for example, if I look at here, I see some of those beautiful details, let's say those details there, okay? So what I'm going to do, is to make sure that my info box is open. If it's not open, just click on the on the eye over there. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'm going to take a drink. One second, please.
You guys can hear me again? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you can't yes. see me, right? You cannot see me. Um, yeah, no. the thumbnail. The thumbnail. Okay, that's good. Okay, because I'm secretly smoking a cigarette here while I'm explaining. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't want you guys to see it, okay? Um, um, I'm a little bit addicted to smoking, and that's a bad thing, I know that. But, okay, I, I have to now, because I'm, I'm, uh, I need to be relaxed, okay? So, uh, so, what I'm going to do is to increase the details here by using the microsounds. So, suppose that I want to increase the definition that you see here, the texture, the structures then don't use the advanced adjustments, but use the microsound adjustments because it will increase the contrast, enhance the details. Makes sense, right? I mean, when you darken something that's already dark and lighten something that's already light, you increase the contrast. So effectively, you increase the detail, right? Makes sense, right? So I'm going to darken this first and then I'm going to lighten that afterwards. So I'm going to... Uh, take my, let's say my eyedropper tool over there, take a few samples, you see that if you look at the info box over there, you see the RGB values, you see that it's 83, it's 82, and that is uh, 88, so around 80, I think, 86. Okay, so I'm going to select 80 over there. So that's zone three, right? Always take a few samples, like three or four samples, that should be enough and always go with the darkest value possible. So if you see, let's say something like 88, 86, and then suddenly 72, go with 72, okay? So I'm going to go with this, activate it. So what it does in the background, you can ignore this message, but it does in the background is to create those, those files. You see that? Those are asymmetrical luminosity mass, <coughs> asymmetrical luminosity mass. They're not normal luminosity mass. Okay, I'm not going to into detail about that, but uh, they are asymmetrical luminosity mass. So now you can grab your lasso tool again, like this. Let's say I'm going to take this entire section. Are you guys still with me? Have you done that too? If you, if if not, please do so. Okay, so I'm assuming you guys have already done that. So now I can go with either default or strict. Default meaning it will bleed over the edges, right? And strict, it has still has a, the, the subtle transition from uh, the, the target area to the adjacent area, but mm -hmm. it will stay within the edges. So I'm going to go with a strict. So I'm going to go with the strong darkening. You see that? It, it will darken only uh, the target values within in that zone. I'm going to do it again, so I'm going to do it two times. If you guys want to play along, please go ahead. I would actually recommend playing along because it uh, makes it easier to follow. So I've done two adjustments like this, right? So if you click on the eyeball over here, because it created two layers, you see the before and after. Okay, so that's step one. Okay, give you guys a minute to just play with it. Okay, so now, Click on deselect selection. So I've, I've done this part. Again, I will show you before and after. Okay. And now I've deselected the selection. And now I'm going to, to target the lighter values in that area. And again, if you go, if you want to lighten something that is already light, go with the lightest value. So I'm going to take a few samples. But before I do that, deactivate the zone three first. Okay. Because else you're left with a lot of uh, redundant channels. Okay. Deactivate that zone first. So you will see that if you look at the channels panel, that the zones, the the let's say the temporary <coughs> channels are gone, right? Okay. I give you guys a few seconds to play with it a little bit to check it for yourself. Let me know if, if you need a little bit longer. Okay. So I am assuming that a few seconds in between is, should be enough for you guys to catch up with me. Okay, so deactivate, uh, once you've done that, you will see that all the channels have been removed, the temporary channels. So now go back to layers. Now I'm going to do the following. I'm going to target the lighter values in, in that same area, th this area that I've uh, selected. And I'm going to go for the lightest value to increase the contrast and hence increase the details. So now I'm going to take a few samples again. Oh, 
my secret fell in my pants. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take a few samples. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's say over here, that is 231. Okay, I think this is a little bit too light. 225, I'm, I need to be especially here, okay? 119, and just looking for the highest value. 98, some over there, 112. 134, this is still within the target area. 127, let me look what, let me look up what the target area was again, because this was my target area. So I'm going to look in here, okay? 121, 162, 170. Okay, I'm going to go with something like 170, 180. Do you guys agree? Yeah? You can also go a little bit lower, one zone lower, if you want to target that more. Okay? So, but, but I found out that the highest cell is 176, 8, something like that. And over here, in that important area, 120. So what I'm going to do is to do, uh, is activate two zones, okay? But first I'm going to start with the highest. So <clears throat> that was 170, around 170. So that's dark lights, okay? And, and if that's already enough, I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to deselect selection first before you activate it, okay? Make sure there's no selection active before you activate it. So I've selected zone seven. Activate, no, I'm going to activate it right now. Ignore the message. You can check your channels over there and you will see that they are there, right? Asymmet asymmetrical luminosity mass. <clears throat> okay, oh yeah, make sure you're always standing on the last layer, okay? On the last layer of the adjustment. Make sure that you're not standing here or there because then it will create something completely different. Make sure you're standing on, the, on, the, on this layer. Okay, so now I can make the same selection again. And in the meantime, I've lost the selection. Yep, I lost the selection. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool again and it was roughly within this area. So now I'm going to go over the, the edge there because I don't think it's going to matter because the thing is, it will stay within that specific zone. So this is not going to be affected, the black, because this is uh, way too low in value. So and even though I've selected it, it's only going to affect the lighter tones. So now I'm going to create on, sorry, I'm going to click on uh, medium lighten, but now I'm going to use the default, meaning it will bleed over the edge, but it doesn't matter here because this is a dark zone that isn't included in here. You can see it here as well. If you look at it, see that? Black conceals, white reveals. See that? This is not going to be affected. This is not going to be affected. And the same for this. So those are temporary channels that you need to get rid of after you've done it. So here, I'm going to go with the default with a smoother transition and go with, let's say, strong light. You see that? Before, after. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do strong again. Usually I would always go with, with medium or subtle by the way, but for this demonstration, I'm going to go with strong so you can see the effect more immediately. So here, I've done two iterations with, with light and it seemed to be enough, you know, I don't need to go with any darker values, even though this was within the range of a lower zone. But usually if you go with the higher, lighter zone, it should, it should already be enough. So again, I will show you before, after. Only the lighter zones have been affected. And hopefully you can see if I do turn those all off. So I started with a darkening over here and then do, did uh, two iterations with the, with the darkening and then the lightening. So this should be before and after. You see the, the increase of definition detail, right? I hope you guys can see that. So this is a, the use of the microsome. Basically, what you do with this is increase the contrast, enhance the details. But the increase of contrast is always a two-phase thing, okay? Always go with darkening the darker tones first and then lightening the lighter tones. 
Okay, I'll let you guys play with it for a few seconds. And if you have any questions, please let me know, okay? Joel, can I just ask a question? Absolutely. When I'm, when I'm throwing the lasso around the area, it's that the interior is staying gray and the exterior is brightening up greatly. Is, uh, and it's obviously inverting. Is there a reason? Am I, I'm not oh. quite sure what I'm doing that's causing that. So, so you're saying that your channels look like, doesn't look like this? No, I have those channels, but within the selection itself, it's it's not changing, but everything outside of it's changing. Okay, I, but I think I know your solution. I had, that problem. I had that problem. You were you 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 had your selection made when you click the activate button, so it selected everything outside mm. your mask area. So if you start over again and have no selection, and then choose your zone, and then choose activate, and then make your selection, that'll fix that. Okay, thank you. I don't know who that was, but thank you for that. I was having the same problem earlier on. Okay. Uh, what's your name, by the way? Because I don't see who's talking. Uh, Anthony, Jamie. tell me. Without the answers. Okay, thank you. So, but, but uh, who was the one asking the question, by the way? Who was that? Uh, Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, if you look at your channels, do you see the same thing as, as I see here or not? The same mask. Because if you see the inverted version, it can also mean that your settings are wrong. So if you go here and go, you stand on the channel there, go to the three stripes there, click on channel options, and it should indicate masked areas, not selected areas. If it's indicating selected areas, change it into masked areas, get rid of your uh, channels by clicking on deactivate and do it again, okay? It should always be mass areas because that is the default. If people are uh, experiencing, let's say, issues with, uh, with, with inverted channels, it's because of that. How did you get to that? Um, okay, just, I'm sorry. just click on click one of those. Right. Click on one of those channels. Click on the three stripes there. Click on channel options. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then you should change it into mass areas. Is it is your selected uh, is your selected to selected areas? Yeah, I, I have that, that I do. Okay, so you have to get, you have to change it, get rid of the uh, channels by clicking on deactivate and then do it again, okay? <clears throat> so any more questions about this part, about using the micro sounds? Is it clear what you can do with it and never forget to deactivate it, okay? And is it also clear what the difference is between micro sounds and advanced adjustments? So advanced is just darkening or lightening globally within the target area, while micro sounds is about darkening a specific target zone and lightening a target zone. And, and the combination of that will uh, result in something that is increased or decreased in contrast, hence in increased or decreased details or textures and structures. Makes sense, hopefully. Yeah, okay. right here. Yeah. Everybody. Joel, this is Mike. Hello, Mike. Do we want to do we want to take a little break at uh, 830? Uh, sure. Yeah, L let's take a break. Uh, you know what? Let's take a break right now and reconvene in six minutes. Is that okay with you guys? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. I, ho I hope you guys are still enjoying it, by the way. Okay. I'm sorry that it takes a little bit longer. Very Absolutely. Good. Fantastic. Very cool. Thank you. This is very good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. I'll be back in a few minutes. Joe? Carry on. So who's still there? Anybody there? Because yeah. if, if you guys understand this, I notice that when I do my selection, it's everything on the outside. Um, I see my marching ant. It's so weird. And only the, the place that I lasso 
<clears throat> it's staying dark and everything else gets lighter. It's like it's been inverted. It's weird. Can you hear me? Jamie, can you hear me? Yes, I do. I do. Okay, sorry, because I think there's something wrong with my mic. Did you try what he said by going over to the channels and pulling down that? And doing what? I'm sorry. Going over to the channels on the right hand side. Did you do that, what he showed you a minute ago? Yeah, it works beautifully. I mean, every time I look at it, I can see it, but the demarcation is dramatic where the lasso is I'm using. Um, and, and it doesn't even matter because the, the area within the interior of the lasso is what, uh, what's having the no effect at all. And it's just the exterior um, that's being impacted. And I did the... Inverting, so have you, made, have you made sure over on Photoshop on the left-hand side that you haven't got, you know, you know the way on the, what do you call them, that they're not inverted? You sure you haven't? It's the, you, know? I, you know what? He has the white layer and I have the black. Let me try it that way. That could be it too. Turn around. Let me... Yeah, because I have the white and the black and that's working fine. Have you turned it around? I can't hear you. Oh, so, sorry, it might be that simple. Still can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it might be that simple. Wait, yeah, it might be that simple. Yeah. I teach I teach all the time using Zoom, so it's it's weird being the uh, the non instructor. I can, so if you teach all the time using Zoom, can I ask you a quick question? Can you hear me properly? Beautifully. You sound like you're coming from England. Uh, Ireland, Irish. <laughs> Very important to get that right. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Jamie, you've gone on mute again. Yes, correct. I so I leave mine on mute. Um, and then I, wow, still same issue. It's just, wow. And I have the white now. And is it working now? Yeah. It's, okay. it's everything in the outside lightens. Are you making your selection before you activate or after you activate? Before. No, you activate first and then you select. select. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm back again. Any issues? I hear some issues over here. No, we're just sorting the ones that we were doing earlier on. How are you, Joe? <laughs> I'm good. I'm smoking a cigarette again. <laughs> Sorry <Jeez>. about that. No, you fell off. I can't believe it. <laughs> okay, I should be stopping. I know that. You know, it's. Uh... Oh, sorry, so should I, and I still haven't. Yeah. But, but the thing is, if I do this kind of stuff, I, I, I like to calm myself down in. With, with using a cigarette, you know, I, I mean, it's either that or a, or a beer, you know, I prefer to <laughs> smoke a cigarette. <laughs> exactly. This will keep you focused a little bit longer. Okay. That, that, that was Rosie, right? R Rosie? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. How, are you? How are you doing, Rosie? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start again. If everyone is uh, back at their places. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks. Okay, so, uh, hold on a minute. So hopefully this is all clear. Is the, 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 uh, the issue with the, uh, with the inverted uh, channels also solved? Jamie? Because, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, that was, that was the problem. I, I, I wasn't activating first. I was making my selection first and then activating. Okay. The dyslexia definitely kicked in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think a lot of us had that issue. Okay, glad to hear it's solved. Okay, let's get uh, moving again. All right, so this is the, again, before and after. You see that this way you can increase details and textures quite easily with, uh, with the microzone adjustments. And again, the difference between microzone and advanced adjustments is uh, the difference between, let's say, uh, uh, 
darkening or lightening globally versus increasing or decreasing contrast in a specific target area, right? Uh, well, uh, default adjustments, strict adjustments, all the same. The difference, of course, bleeding or not bleeding over the edge. But usually, when you do this, you can. It's it's safer to use. Well, it's not. It's safer to use the default adjustment within the zones than with the advanced adjustment because here it's already restricted by using a specific target zone. So in this case, it won't bleed over the edge, even though I'm selecting it over the edge, right? Creating uh, depth now. This is something I'm going to go uh, uh, discuss in detail with another image, because the thing is for creating depth, uh, you cannot use it if you don't ha have any hard mass. It's, it's always recommended to create depth using pre-created hard mass. So that is really essential. Uh, having said that, you can still try to create depth <laughs> in an image like this, for which I don't have a hard selection. So suppose that uh, I don't have any hard selection, but I like to have a much stronger dark to light transition within this area. So ideally, I would have loaded my mask, my hard mask. But now, since I don't have a hard mask, I'm going to do something like this. Okay, and let's make it a little bit bigger. So I don't have a hard mask, but I'm still going to use the creating depth. So what I want is to go from dark to light that way. So what I do is uh, find the right, sorry, hold on a minute, I dropped something on my pants, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go from left to right, and then I'm going to go with the, okay, by the way, small, medium, large, okay, small indicating it goes, uh, well, it, it has a coverage of 25%, in this case of obviously from left to right within the indicated selection, okay? Always create a selection for that. So in this case, if I click on S, small, 25%, it will go from left to right. It will cover up to here, roughly speaking. Medium is 50%, so that's going to be halfway over here. Large is roughly 75%, up to here, okay? So in this case, I wanna go from dark to light. And actually, I, I would recommend doing it like this, but you can do it like this. So I would go with, the, let's say, D2, dark 2, this 25, 50, 75. Well, it's not, this is almost close to 100%. And the same for the lights. But let's go with, with this, medium, dark 2. You would see something like this, right? But of course, if you do this, you would see this edge because the creating depth is built to have a pre-created mask with a the, with the, with the very specific distinct edge, hard edge like this, okay? But the thing is, I can uh, reload that mask again, and I can make use of my restore feature. So I've, I've, I went from left to right. So it, it creates an edge here, it creates an edge there, and it creates an edge there. You can imagine if I would have done, would have done this with uh, let's say hard mask covering the entire flower, then it wouldn't matter, right? If it goes from hard edge dark to light. But now I'm doing it right in the middle of the flower. So I can use a restore. Uh, this is a very, very important feature in my, uh, both my manual workflow, but also in this automated workflow. This is, all, this is something that I would always use. I mean, I never use creating depth without also including any of the restore features. So in this case, you can go in all directions. You see an arrow up, arrow down, arrow left and right, indicating obviously to the direction. So if I go with extra small, it will cover, let's say if I go from bottom to top, it will cover roughly 10%. Small, uh, go from bottom to top, arrow up, will cover roughly 25%, restore large 75%, medium 50%, okay? It's all the same uh, terminology. Small is always 25, medium 50, L, roughly 75% coverage, okay? Extra small, roughly 10%. So I would go from left to right first, right? To cover up, to, let's say, to get rid of that hard edge. So make sure that the layer with the, la with the last adjustment is always on top of the layer that doesn't have that adjustment, like this. This is the layer without the adjustment, 
Okay, so it's already, since I only did one pass, I could also do two passes, let, let me do that. So let me go with the D1, left to right. So done two passes, so make sure that the layer with the last adjustment is on top of the layer without the adjustment. So I have to merge it down one layer, right? To make sure that it is now on top of the layer without the adjustment before I do a restore. Does it still make sense what I'm saying here? Can you still follow me? Okay, so now, okay, stand on that last layer. And now I do a restore from left to right like this. You see, it, it doesn't look uh, good of course because you, you shouldn't be doing this, but it's just to show you. I can also do from bottom to top like this and then top to bottom like this. Sorry, like this. So you see something here that actually doesn't look too bad at all, right? I mean, it looks uh, like a sort of darkening. So you can also do that, but this is not the normal usage of this uh, creating depth tool. You always have to have a hard edge, okay? But still I can make it even more subtle by going a little bit more from left to right with the small, covering 25% instead of just uh, uh, 10%. You see, it looks even more subtle. So you can also create that in here if you don't have a hard selection. And it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, you don't see any strange hard edges. Have you guys also tried that, doing this? Do I need to give you a few seconds to just try it out? Okay, so and this doesn't create any extra layers. This is just all done within one layer. Well, let, let, let me show you again. So I went back two steps, okay? So hold on a minute, I'm going to do it all again. Okay, one step, no more steps. Okay, here, I, this, this was my starting point. So I created this rectangle with the rectangular marquee tool, okay? And now I'm going to go from left to right, clicking on MD2, yeah? And then once again, MD1, 50% coverage from left to right. Have you guys done that? Yeah. Yeah. And now make sure if you want to do a restore because you want to restore it because there's a stupid edge over there. Make sure that the layer that you want to restore is right on top of the layer without the adjustment. That is this layer. Because you, we've done two passes, right? So I'm going to merge it down. So now it's right on top of the layer without the adjustment. And now I can do a restore within that selection. So I'm going to go from left to right first, extra small. I'm going to go from top to bottom to get rid of that edge and then from bottom, sorry, bottom to top now, top to bottom, like that. And since this doesn't look great, I'm going to go with small from left to right to make it even more subtle, like that. Have you guys done that? Is it clear? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so, so this is the end result. Looks pretty. Pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, so that's what you can do also, but it's not the actual usage of this creating depth uh, feature because you always need to have a hard edge. So, um, okay, there are more options over here in the creating depth section and a very special one is the special effects. And by the way, you can also go from, you can also go with diagonals from bottom left and from bottom right, top left, top right. Uh, 45 degrees, so you can go in, uh, in those diagonal directions as well, but there are no in-between uh, uh, angles other than those. Because my experience is that you don't need any other uh, angles than that. You can easily solve that by just playing with the restore tool. Okay, and usually if you, if you would need a different angle than that, it's only useful in a very small selection or a very small target area. But in those cases, you can use the special effects. Okay, I'll show you that later. Uh, still clear up to now? Yeah? I'll give yeah. you guys a few seconds yeah. to catch up with, uh, with me, to check things and whatever you need to do. Okay. Now a little bit about toning. Well, toning is just an additional preset. I mean, uh, you have the single split tonings over here, okay? You can click on the drop-down list and click on cinematic. Well, those are uh, 
split complementary split toning, meaning uh, I'm using three different tones, colored tones, in the shadow area, the mid-tone area, and the highlight area. Okay, so if you like that, you can just click on one of those, for example, this one. Okay, then play with the intensity slider and have something like this and click apply. Don't forget to click apply. Okay, then you see is the Sin City preset over there, which is a mix of warm and cool tones. The warm tones are represented in the highlights and also in the mid tones and the cool tones are represented in the uh, darker shadow areas. This is all optional, of course, because thing is, this is something that you like or don't like, uh, but it's a very advanced preset. It's not the same way, uh, it's not the same kind of uh, split turning that you would see in most YouTube tutorials using the color balance slider. But what I've done here is to create luminosity mass in the background and then assign those luminous, luminosity mass to one of those uh, 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 zones, okay, mid, uh, the mid-tones or the uh, shadows or highlights, and then assign specific color to those zones. So that's quite advanced. Okay, so you can also play with, uh, with the other uh, split tone inspired by music, and you see that all kind of like uh, jazz music, okay, but um, let's say you can click on kind of blue, and guess what, it's a little bit blue. <laughs> see that? Okay, so this is something that you like or don't like, but you can always play with it. And this is something that you always need to do at the very end of your black and white workflow. Okay, so the sequence is like this. If you don't have any pre-created hard mass, go with black and white conversion first, neutral. Next step can be the global adjustments. Okay, I would, if you don't have a, a hard mass, you could actually skip it. Okay, because it's, it actually makes more sense when you have a pre-created hard mask. So if you don't have that, you can just skip it or you can play with one of those highlights or shadow tonality, okay, to increase the contrast a little bit. Uh, but usually you would go to advanced adjustment and play with the lesser tool and then go with darkening and lightening. You can then also go with the microzone to increase the contrast. So don't forget, first darken, darker tones, then light and lighter tones, that's the, the sequence, okay? Because if you only darken darker tones and don't like the lighter tones, then actually you, can, you might be, well, it's also increasing or decreasing contrast, but not with the intended effect of increasing the, the details. Because I'm doing this because I also want to sharpen the image. Most people would use a sharpening tool. I never use that and, and, and none of my images, okay? I always increase the, the contrast locally to to make the image look sharper because I never use any sharpening tools. And this is the most natural, but also the most photographic way, I think, of increasing details and increasing sharpness, okay? If you, if you don't agree with that, feel free to not agree. <laughs> it's, it's all a matter of personal taste, of course, but I believe in the more, let's say, puristic workflow uh, that almost borders against the analog era. Okay, I, I, I also definitely replace skies, by the way. I, I, I rather play with the available information that I have in my photograph and to do some adjustments with it. So that is the recommended workflow for if you don't have any hard selections. So black and white conversions, maybe this, go to advanced, go to Microsoft, and eventually you can also do a little bit of toning. If you want to be a little bit more daring, you can do stuff like this and you can create depth with the, with the with the random marquee tool selection, just the way I did it, all right? Can I ask one question? On the split toning, that's the last thing that you did, do yeah. you actually make a specific selection or does it split tone the whole image? It will split tone the entire image, yes, correct. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep, yeah. and by the way, in split toning over here, you also see this, if you click on basic toning, it's a split tone generator. So if you, if you think my, uh, a choice of presets are, aren't good enough, click on this and it will generate a random split tone. You see that? If you don't like it, just click on it again. Okay, perfect, thank you. And, and then you can adjust it in here because it creates a folder there. So you can change the, the shadows 
the mid sorry the, the shadows mid tones or highlights so you can click on that hold on a minute and then you see this appearing and then you can play with the hue the saturation like this but i wouldn't do that because uh, <laughs> the thing is it will generate split complementary split tones all the time exact split complementary split tones. so if you change the hue you're losing that color harmony right it, it's better to just click on this again well because you've gone to all the trouble and done the work why would i bother S say that again because you've gone to the trouble and done the work <laughs> yeah well you know it's to give you a little bit more flexibility you know thank you okay so uh, that's the uh, uh, split tones and that's the, let's say the overview of the panel. So what I'm going to do now is to do a similar workflow, but now with an, uh, with an architectural image. And let me see, and something with, a, with selections, okay? Not this one, this, this is uh, for the last part, but I'm going to go here to my Salk Institute. So you already have this image. So what I would suggest now is to all open up this image and then, uh, hold on a minute. So I'll wait for you guys a few seconds, give you the opportunity to load and open the file. All right, so. So this is a uh, file with pre-created hard mask, like this, okay? You have all sorts of selections over there, okay? Just look at your channel panel and just browse through it. I'm going to get rid of my luminosity mask because I've already created them there. So you can click on that and click on that. So if I'm right, you should have something that looks like this, but something around, what is it? 20, 20 mask, I think, something like that, okay? Okay, now I'm going to follow the workflow, the recommended workflow for uh, uh, images for which you have created pre-created mass. Of course, you always start off with the black and white conversion. Go with neutral, do this, all right? Now, the following step is to, well, Typically, what I, what I would do is always start with darkening the sky first and make the sky look the way that I want it. That's usually my starting point. Sometimes I start with a building, but 80% of the times I would say I would start with the sky. So I'm going to start with sky because it's also my critical selection because it separates figure from ground. My figure being the entire uh, Salk Institute over here. Not so much the water, the ocean that you see there. And this is the ground, okay? The sky is the ground in this case. So I'm going to load my selection. So just please follow along, load selection, and then select, I think it was sky, maybe, do you guys also have sky opt over there or not? No, we don't have those selections. Okay, because that's the one I created in the session. Okay, oh, sky. Yeah, we, do, we do, we do, sorry, we do, we do. Yeah, yeah. So, just, so just click on sky, all right? Click okay. And then what I would do is usually is to go to global adjustment and then play with the low key to remove the contrast and darken it just globally. So click a low key, move to the, to the right and then do that, apply. Okay, I'm going to do it one more pass. And in this case with the global adjustments, uh, you're not going to, well, the selection is not going to be reloaded. So I click here again. So select sky like that. All right. And now go with low key again, all the way to 100% apply. It already looks dark, right? At the same time, you will see that if you do this on a specific structure like a building, you will see that it looks very flat and you will lose the details. But I would always recommend to darken it after that, because if you do darken it, you will bring back the details again, but in a very, very subtle way. I will show you that later with another image. Oh, I have so many images to play with. Guys, it's going to be a night session as well. All right, uh, hope you guys don't mind. Okay, so here, typically what I would do then is to load selection again, and I would go with creating depth. Okay, so you will see that if I use 
a pre-graded mass, I would very, uh, well, the, the advanced adjustments and the microsecond adjustments are going to be used less, okay? Of course, I still use this. I rarely use advanced adjustment, but more the microsecond and the creating depth. So basically, when you have pre-created mask, black and white conversions, global adjustments are mainly those two, then go to the creating depth, and then go back and forth between creating depth and microsecond. Okay, so now uh, I've done this, so I would go to either creating depth or microsome, but I always start off with creating depth and the microsome is always the last part of my post-processing. Okay, so, so here we go to creating depth, load selection, sky, I would go now from top to bottom dark. Uh. Yes, is that the question? Or no. Just a sigh of uh, despair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, if there's something, please let me know. Okay, so top to bottom, right? So uh, I would say I would like to have something that's a little bit darker up to here, roughly, with a nice gradation to there. So I'm going to use top to bottom, dark uh, D2, medium 50% coverage. Okay, you see some banding there, but again, zoom in 100%, 100%, and it's not going to be there. See that? It's all uh, a Photoshop trick, okay? You, they like to uh, make you quite desperate, okay, with, uh, <laughs> with their antics. Anyway, uh, there's some banding there, but it's not real banding because it's a downscaled image of eight bits. Now what I would usually do is go from bottom to top, make it lighter there. So from here to there, I would go with a large 75% coverage, like this. See that? So I've created two of those and it looks like this then. Okay, and this before, this after. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's uh, that's what I would start with. Let's have a look at the plaza itself over there. I mean, if you look at the original color file there and you have my final black and white image in mind, you know that this part looks quite different from the rest, right? I mean, this part looks quite dark in my, in my case. So how do you do that? And again, I would load selection. I would select, it. it's called Plaza up there, right? So just click OK. You guys still follow me? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So here you see that the entire plaza has been selected. So guess what? What, what? what do you guys think I'm doing next to make it look like the end result that you've seen before? What would you guys do? Go with darkening? What would you do? Anyone who dares to give an answer? Uh, creating depth from bottom to top, the bottom darkening. Oh, bottom to top darkening. Okay. Any other options? No? Global adjustment. Global adjustment. I would always do that because the thing is, you know, I want to darken it. If I only darken it like this, like say bottom to top, I will show you the difference. Uh, let's say with the D2 from bottom to top large, you will see that it will keep its contrast. Okay, uh, let's, let me do it a few times. You see that? It's, it's different. It's, it's dark, mm -hmm. light, that's good. But at the same time, it's still contrasty. It doesn't have that that slick look that I've created <laughs> in my own <laughs> self. Okay, sorry that I say that about my own work, okay? But <laughs> That's okay. okay, your work is good. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to uh, merge it down to show you before and after to make a comparison, okay? So, but I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go to global adjustment first, okay? So low key, because I want to darken it and I want to remove the contrast. And that's all the way to the right. You see, it's a different kind of thing, right? Okay, click OK. Uh, we're not seeing it. Yeah, this is before. This is the other one. This is this one. And now, and now I'm doing the creating depth. So I would load selection again. Plaza. Creating depth. Now from bottom to top. And now we darken it with, let's say, a D2 large from bottom to top. So this is what I, what I would do, and this is which, 
what you get if you would only darken it without removing the contrast. It's different, right? You may like it, but it's not the, the kind of thing that I would do. I have this. I hope you can see the difference. This looks more like, I don't know what, I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but it, it looks better, I think, right? Yeah. So uh, have you guys also done that uh, on your own computers? Have you followed along? Do I need yeah. to give you some time, right? But hopefully it's clear that there's a big difference between just darkening it, even though it has all those subtle gradients and, uh, and, and darkening it by removing the contrast first and then darkening it and then it looks completely different because this is two passes and this is also two passes but but it's entirely different result okay so i'm going to get rid of this all right so i'm not going to do the entire picture by the way okay because it takes too much time because i still want to show you something else so here i want to create depth and by the way i, I would i would do the same with this uh, with this uh, with this fountain with this channel i don't know what exactly what it is it's, it's a big black hole almost you know but uh, it's a very nice uh, thing there i would do the same with that also do the uh, global contrast low key adjustment and then darken it okay i mean if i, I can show you that joe would you always do the global adjustment first um, let's say 80 percent of the time she yes, because i like to uh, remove the contrast first before I'm going to add shadows or light. Because the thing is, if you leave it, if you leave it like that, you already have something that's already high contrast. And even though it's already dark, you know, there's always some light in it. If you remove the contrast first, it's going to be more effective and more subtle to add shadows after that. I will show you that later in another image, okay? But here, for example, if you look here, I'm going to load that thing too. That's called, uh, I think it's this or not. No, it's the wrong one. Okay, it's called uh, midsection all. Yeah, that thing, okay? Uh, so first, go to global adjustments, low key, do that, apply, and then load it again. Midsection all, go to creating depth, and then go with uh, from dark to light, from bottom to top, with the, let's say, Let's go crazy with D2. Okay, there it is. Uh, it's too much. I'm going to go with a D. Well, actually, it's quite good. Uh, and now I'm going to go from top to bottom with a D1. Okay, now it looks like this. You see, this is before. Sorry, this is before. This is after. It's something completely different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, more subtle. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is what I also do. Okay, let's go to one of those panels on the side, the, the walls on the side. So I've already created uh, the mask. By the way, guys, uh, can you still follow along? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Just, just scream if you if you want me to slow down, okay? But not too hot, not too loud, please. <laughs> okay, I'm going to merge down some of those layers because the thing is, I don't want this file to get too large, okay? So, and normally I would, save those iterations in between, right? Uh, looking at my file structure management system in, at, in the beginning of this uh, marathon session. Uh, okay, so I have this, those few layers. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to load a, one of the selections from the walls over here. Load selection, and, you, and keep in mind, great in depth is about uh, uh, in, uh, the light transition, the dark to light transitions, and the identification of edges, right? And increasing the contrast in and around the edges. So I'm going to do this, load selection, and then I think it was, not sure which one was, this one, yeah. But before you can do that, make sure that your masks are clean. Okay, so if looking at this, this was this one, where was it? Uh, this one. Because the thing is, if the masks are not clean and there are some white dots over here, the software cannot identify and cannot detect where the left edge is and where the right edge is. So suppose that you have, uh, let's say something like this. I'm going to grab my brush, make something a little bit white here. Let's say a white dot like that. Okay, and I'm going to not clean it up and load that. 
tree A. There it is. So there's something there that I didn't see, okay. And then we'd go from, let's say from right, uh, well, look, let's go from left to right, from here from here to there with, with dark. And it has no effect because it starts here, right? Yeah. And, it, and it has a coverage of 25%, it would end here. So make sure your masks are clean. So I'm going to clean it up first, okay. There we go. And the best way to do that is just by uh, going here. Okay, hold on a minute, I, I will show you. Suppose that this is the, the, the part that you want to, to uh, clean up. A big, it, and I'm not sure if, you're, if you've already cleaned it up uh, everything. So go to your marquee tool, click on this first, and then click on plus, and then you can do something like this. Okay, so it will add that selection. You can also do that. Stay away from the edges, okay? Just stay away from that because things, if you don't include uh, this part of the edge and there's still some white noise uh, visible there, it doesn't matter because it's still close to the edge. And if it starts here, it doesn't really matter, right? But here it makes a lot of a difference. So do that and then go to your Pro Tools and then click on this, for example, D4, and it will surely be gone, okay? If you, if you cannot do this, and you still have that, uh, let's say, that white dot over there. Let me try to deselect it first. And let's say that it's not pure white, but a little bit uh, gray. So I'm going to, let's say, make it a little bit grayer like that. Okay. So what you can do there, because usually those, those white dots are not pure white, okay? Then you, you can select the entire image like this, and then click on this, D4, selective adjustment. Add, and sorry, amplify only. See that? It, it doesn't affect this. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you guys seen, see, have seen yeah. that? It'll only, so, it'll only affect anything that's not pure white. Yes, if it's pure white, you cannot do that, okay? Because this is not pure white, it's now something around, what is it, uh, L2 to 30 perhaps, something like that. So now I can click on D4. I have, I, have, I have a question. Could you also use the brush tool and change it to overlay? And yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Of... Yeah, absolutely. You can do that too. So basically I can do this and- I, I don't it. want to confuse the, the subject. I'm just thinking, you know, that's all. Yeah, you can do this right uh, foreground color black okay and then go with uh, let's say uh, well you can go with normal as long as it's normal, as, so as normal as, dark and overlay yeah, and yeah like this but also if it's uh, let's say uh, closer to the edge let's say it suppose it would be over here yeah then i would use the overlay yeah set it to 100 percent Okay, then you can do this. You have to do it a few times like this, but you can also safely go here. So it's actually better than dodging and burning. Mostly people, if they are using the channel masking technique, they would always use dodging and burning. It's better to use the brush overlay. Right, okay, right. It's, it's much more effective. I mean, you can- Pushes it to the extremes. Yeah, this is much faster and much more effective than trying to mask something using the dodging and burn tool. This goes like this, you know? It's, it's really so much more effective. I just have one more quick question that, when you open up this file, you invested a lot of manual time making up all these masks. It wasn't that you hit a button and, or you did it through luminosity and you separated them, but you made all of these separate masks as yeah. the foundation for this file, right? For this file, yeah, but 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 again, you don't always need hard mask. It's it's it, it's something that you have to decide for yourself. Okay, you know, uh, suppose uh, I'm lazy, uh, I don't want to do go into all the mask. Then I would try to do it with the uh, uh, without the selections, without the hard selection. But the thing is, it's always recommended to have hard mask because you can control everything. Then I mean, the, the amount of control that you have over an image is 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 is, is, is well greatly reduced if you don't have hard mass. 
it's always recommended to have hard mass. Whether you do landscapes or still life or portraits or architecture, especially architecture, cannot do without hard mass because you have all those multiple planes on a building, right? You need to identify all those edges on a building. So you need to create the right kind of depth perception on each plane of the building. So you always need to have hard mass. That's why I always think that uh, working in architectural images is always diff more difficult in terms of post-processing than let's say a landscape or still life. Because with the, with the landscape, there's always just one or two planes. For example, you have the sky and you have the mountain or the tree. But the tree doesn't have edges. It's an a organic thing, you know? You don't have all the edges that you need to identify. So you can suffice with just one mass of the tree and one mass of the sky. But architecture, you have you need sometimes 20, 30, maybe even more mass than that, right? So that's why it's always a little bit more complicated. But again, uh, hard mass gives you control over shapes and form, while luminosity mass gives you control over light. Combine those two together and you control everything. I mean, there's nothing more than just shapes, forms, and light in a photograph. Okay, if you forget about the color, there's nothing more than that. That's the essence of a photo. So if you create hard mass, you control and isolate shapes. If you create luminosity mass, that can be done automatically in the panel, and you combine them together, you create, uh, you control and isolate shapes, forms, and light, and basically control everything. And you can create any kind of image you have in mind. Okay, because I see a lot of people just working with luminosity mass, but it's actually very uh, limited, you know, it's because you can only control light, but the essence of a great photograph is also a great shape, a great form that you want to emphasize. You need to be able to separate figure from ground. That's why the creation of hard mass is quintessential. Okay? That's Does a good explanation. Okay. So now I forgot where I was. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, the, the, this thing, okay? Make sure you've cl uh, you clean up the, the mass, okay? So uh, I'm going to do one example here, and then I'm going to go to the next image. Uh, okay, guys, uh, sorry about the uh, uh, duration of this session, but uh, I really want to be very complete today. So here, right 3A. Joel? Yes? Joel, one, one question. Yeah. Um, people would like to know, if the recording will be available for download? Yes, absolutely. I, I, it's recording in the background. It's going to, put in the going to be put in the cloud. And I'm, uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to share it yet, but it's going to be shared, okay? But please bear with me with that. Thank you. Okay, so here from, uh, I've already made a decision that I'm going to go from dark to light from here to there, okay? So what I do is select that, uh, go to creating that because again, architecture images, if you have hard mass or any other kind of images, if you have hard mass, uh, go with the, like a white version, global adjustment, then straight to creating that and try to skip those. But this is always a more, uh, has more tweaking kind of uh, purpose in, in this case. So here, left to right, dark, let's say D2, like that. Okay, that's the wrong side, hold on a minute. Wrong direction, right to left, that's what I meant. Right to left, D2. Okay, now try to give it some shape. So you're going to go from bottom to top. Just try to follow along, okay? Uh, let's say with the D2 as well. Okay, a little bit more from the right. So you just play with that. And then let's say with small D2. Okay, now go from left to right with the light. Like that, I go with the L. No, I'm going to go with the uh, L2, but small, okay? Now, look at that. It looks like that. And I'm going to go with another L2 like that. So you see that you've already created some depth in this panel of the building, correct? Wow. And it goes really fast. But it's not, that's not enough because you know that you also need to identify the edges and increase or decrease the contrast. So let me try to pull up this selection of this panel over there. So load selection. And that's, I don't know the name, I think it's 3B, not sure. Yeah, so 3B, I'm going to go from right to left with dark again, and from left to right with light, okay? So here, and make sure again, your masks are clean. 
So right left, I'm going to go with a D2 dark, small. Yeah, from bottom to top as well. I want to make it a little bit darker, a little bit a D2 medium, a little bit more from right to left, D1. And now I'm going to go from left to right light. So here, so let's go with, uh, let's go crazy with L3. Okay, that's way too much. And you see now my mask is not clean because it covered the entire area. So I'm going to go back and making sure that this part is clean. So I'm going to go have a look. Okay, deselect. So that is 3, 3B. No, not that, uh, this one. Okay, I think it, it is somehow corrupted. I'm going to go to Pro Tools. I'm going to go with the D4. Okay, D4 again. Just to make sure, I, I cannot see where it is exactly, but I'm just going to select it like this. Go to click on plus there. Just going to select it like that. Make sure that it stays within the target area. I can also do this. I can also do that. And then hit D4 and now add an amplifier. Okay, now I'm quite positive that it's cleared up. All right. So, yes. It's my question. Uh, why can't you just use inverse mask? Inverse mask. How do you mean? Uh, invert. 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 You mean like this? Is that what you meant? And then lighten it up, or? Yeah. And okay, then but, just paint. And then just paint with white oh, over yeah. the invert. Yeah, but that's the same as with painting with black over the normal mask because it. Okay. You see, it's a, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. So right three B, I've corrected. So I'm going to load it again. So here we go. Load selection right three B. There it is. And now I want to go from left to right light. And hopefully this is going to work now. Let's left to right. And then it's going to be light three. Yeah, that's much better, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is before, well, hold on a minute, yeah, before and after. You see what, what happened? That now I've created this edge. I've identified this edge and I'm, I made it stand out. So basically, if you, if you go zoom, uh, sorry, merge down all those layers. Okay. Deselect. See this? See that? This and it's a complete difference, right? Yeah, I've created depth and I've created presence. I've created presence by creating depth and identifying the edges and increasing the contrast in and around the edges. Yeah. Does, it, does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. So you can do all of this with all the uh, different elements in, in the image. I hope this is already a little bit clear. If not, please ask me <laughs> because I'm going to go straight to the next uh, image, all right? So no more, no more questions. So I'm going to go with the other image. And I, I have a, a little question. I keep screwing this up. Yeah. I've got it selected where I have uh, the uh, three B, uh, the B, the, the narrow one. Yeah. And I have the load, loaded the selection. And then when I go to creating depth and I hit, I've got it from left to right. And I hit one of the presets like D2 medium. Mm -hmm. um, it's not creating a new layer and giving me the adjustment. Okay, perhaps you're st not standing on the right layer. Just make sure that you always stand on the last layer. Perhaps maybe you stood here. Yeah, I'm on the last layer, the top layer. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe, or maybe, or maybe uh, you, your mask isn't cleaned up. That's also possible, okay? Because you've, I've, I've, I've shown you uh, just a few minutes ago that if I didn't right. clean it up, uh, you wouldn't see the effect, so meaning there must be some white spot or whatever, uh, somewhere on the right or on the left. So if okay. you do it, if you do it like this, so like it uh, demonstrated, uh, yes. okay. over here, yeah, yeah? You. And you should be able to just fix that. All right, thank you. All right, so now uh, this one. Okay, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to do something in between with the Pro Tools, just to make it a little bit varied, okay? And then go with the last image, and that should be it there. So the thing is here, and this is quite interesting, that you can, which you can also do with the panel, is the following. So here, 
Okay, not this one. But this is, uh, this is the final image that I have, right? This, let me see, where's that thing? No, it's not the one. The, uh, it's also not the one. Okay, where's my color image? That's great, Joel. Uh, I lost my color image. Just the, the one there. This one there. There's a collateral. Okay, I'm going to open that up. So one second, please. Because this is quite interesting to know. Uh, what's, which, what's it called, Joe? Say that again. Which one are we doing? Is, are we doing the okay, th this is photo that you guys don't have. This, uh, this oh. just a, a, a bonus thing from, from my side that I want to show you guys. Actually, okay, it's, it, it is meant for the, uh, uh, for the people in the advanced session, but I'm going to show you it anyway. Just to get a taste of uh, what it is like to work with the Pro Tools and what I have in store for the advanced session. So that's going to be another marathon session. The guys don't know that yet. They expect me to talk for one and a half hour, but they don't know it's going to be all night long, you know? But that's, I hope you're going to enjoy <laughs> that. <laughs> all right, so it's, it's better to give too much than uh, not enough, okay? So this is the original color file. You see that if you look here, you would say, and you would think, oh, that's quite a worthless image. I mean, I don't have any definition in the sky at all. The sky looks overexposed. So this is something that I'm going to throw away. That's what a lot of people think, okay? But, you know, I'm quite stubborn. So what I've done is, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to work on a building, have this, and some, some people would consider replacing the sky. Well, you know that I've already told you, I'm never doing that. I always try to use the inf information that's already available in the photograph. So I know that if you look here, that if I click on the luminosity mask, it will actually reveal all the information that's available in your photograph. So before I throw it away, I would go here, click on the light luminosity mask. Okay, I click on also the half values. So th those are the in-between values. And then I'm going to analyze my channels because that, that's where they are being created. And then I would look here and I see that if I click on lights one, yeah, that's the luminosity mass that doesn't reveal too much. But if you go here and here, you would see that there's actually a lot of information in the photograph, right? Yeah. So basically I can bring back and can restore the clouds in the sky without replacing the photograph, even though nothing was visible when looking at this photograph. Never forget about that, guys, because the thing is, if you see something like that, you might be surprised to find out how much information is actually available if you click on the luminosity mask. Okay, but that's one thing, identifying that you have so much information. So I'm going to use those, that, this information that I found the luminosity mask and use it in my black and white uh, result. So I'm going to use this one, light seven, because I see those clouds there that I want to bring back in my photograph. So I'm going to use light seven. Okay, I have to move you guys to another position. That stu the stupid zoom controls is driving me insane, you know? <laughs> okay, uh, hold on a minute. Move that that way. How can I get you guys in another position? But I don't know. Okay. You can press the little, the little buttons on the left of the zoom control. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's not a horizontal strip instead of a vertical strip. I don't know why I have that right now. Okay, anyway, so going back here. So this is something that I've been working on. So I've been working on the building first, already created depth uh, in, in the entire object. Okay, so how, bring a bit, bring, how do I bring back the details in sky? Now, of course, I've already created selections there. What you do, and that's always my recommendation, always go darken and remove the contrast before you add light and shadow. Okay, that's what I do. So I'm going to load. I, I know most people don't do that. That's always my recommended workflow. Okay, so load selection of the sky optimize. Okay, so you see this now. And I'm going to click on global adjustments, low key. 100%. I do it again. Load selection. Low key. 
two passes. Okay, there it is. All right. So now I have to darken it. So now I can bring back the light details, correct? So yeah. what I do is to uh, first create a new layer because if you work with the Pro Tools, it has an effect on both channel panel and layer panel. So that's why I decided that you have to add a new layer manually. So you have to do that. So Command J or Control J like this, okay? And now load the selection again of the sky, sky optimized. Load selection of the light luminosity must have been found. And I identified light seven to be useful to bring back the details in sky, right? So I'm going to go to my other file, my selections file. I never store them in one file, but here. So here is light seven. Now intersect it within that selection. So intersection means you're only going to use it within the already indicated target area, not outside, okay? So that's what I do, intersect it with that selection. You see this message, just ignore that. And now- Oh, could I ask a question, I'm sorry. That's just gone a tiny bit. Is there any way you could just slightly go through the last one or two steps there? Like what exactly, why are you intersecting? What's the- Okay, I, 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 you, I didn't hear that correctly. Did anyone hear what Rosie said? He's asking why you intersected. Could you go back two steps? Why I did intersect it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, so, so if I didn't do that, so let's say I'm going to load selection, do a sky optimize, mm -hmm. or if it, oh, let's skip this. Suppose that I would only use light seven. Okay, this one. Without isolating yeah. it within the sky, then what happens is that this, the building will also be affected. I don't want that. I only want to bring back the clouds in the sky, not the details in the building. So that's why I first loaded the sky, this, and then load this luminosity mask here, light seven, so that I will only affect the, uh, the details within the sky, okay, intersect. Because if I don't do that, what happens, it will be replaced by light seven, okay? So you have to do this. So like this, I've already created a new layer. And now start with add and amplify before you do the amplify only. So I'm going to go start with L3. Look at that, more of that, I can do even more. And I can do L4. And you see what happens now, you bring back the details in a very, very convincing way. And I can show you that, that it's not just uh, some stupid light uh, effect, but it's, you see that? The, the subtlety in the clouds, I hope you can see that guys. I mean, this before, this Excellent. after. So this is how you bring back details in any kind of sky. What I can also do, okay, before you ask a question, I'm, I'm going to finish it off, okay? So here I can say, you know, uh, I don't like it that this is also affected. So what you do then is basically say, okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go to creating dev. I'm going to restore from top to bottom with extra small, that's 10%, so roughly this, and this will go away. Make sure it's right on top of the layer that you didn't uh, adjust, the last one without the adjustment, this one is already there load the selection, and now you can go with this. You see that? I can do it again. You see that? You can also do this, Fair by enough. the way. Suppo suppose that I only want to have those clouds, uh, let's say, accentuated. I can do this, all right? Then a load selection. And so I indicate the target area. Okay, before I do that, I'm going to save it as a temp selection, save selection. Call it T1, sorry, T1, okay. Now I load the already created hard mass from the sky, optimized, okay. I say intersect it, okay, because I don't want to affect the building. So intersect with that, all right. Now this part has been selected. Now load it again, and now intersect it with light seven from the other file. Light seven, there, okay. Again, intersect it. So two intersections. All right, click OK. Get this message, forget about it. Now we go to Pro Tools, start with L4. See that? <laughs> yeah, 
and then mm, okay, yeah, yeah. and then you can also go with this. Okay, if you think that it looks stupid because the thing is, hold on a minute, of I forgot to add a new layer. Oh, my bad. Okay, so guys, uh, maybe I need some coffee. I think. <laughs> so here, okay, you, you you might see an edge over there. Okay, you might see an edge. So what you do then is load the selection that you have selected. So you have saved T1. All right, and now. Uh, okay, hold on a minute. Load it again with the sky optimized intersected. So this is what I had, right? And now do a, 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 a restore from top to bottom and from bottom to top. Okay? And the edge, if, if it already was visible, it's not gone. So here's the thing. Any questions about this? About the enormous possibilities of the panel? about this trick or are you bored or <laughs> definitely definitely not bored okay uh, not, not bored a little confused maybe but yes. not bored okay this was a bonus feature <laughs> sorry Just to review real quick you you selected the sky then created another selection and intersected that is that correct that's correct yeah Okay, great. Okay, so actually it was just a bonus feature, okay? I'm not going to show you another bonus feature before I go to the last image, okay? So the thing is, uh, this. Oh, not this. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, where's my tree now? Okay, I've, I've clicked away my tree. Okay, hold on a second. So bear with me, please. I just want to show you what you can do, that you also can create masks with a panel. Uh, there it is. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so suppose that you want to create a mask out of this panel. What you can do now, and that is part of my advanced masking techniques that I'm go going to demonstrate later in a separate session. Mm -hmm. But the simplest form is this. What you do is go to Pro Tools, create a luminosity mask. Okay? You evalu evaluate the luminosity mask and look for the luminosity mask that you like, that you think will give you the, ex uh, the, the, the right starting point. Okay, I need to explain this more in detail, but that, this is not the time and place for it. I just want to demonstrate it quickly, okay? Just to get an impression, just to get a taste of it. So I'm going to evaluate it and see, okay, you know what? I think I can use this. Maybe I can use that, but this is too dark. So we're going to create new luminosity with the half values because three was too dark, two is maybe too light. So I'm going to go with two and a half. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to duplicate that, do that, get rid of all the luminosity mass, stand on here, make a copy again. All right. So what you do now. It's basically you can go two ways. You can say, okay, I'm going to create a new alpha channel. Always start off with white, load the luminosity mask that you found, just that, and now just click on this. Okay, and then say you're going to finish it off. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to finish it off with that. Okay, I should have done that. That's a stupid mistake. Okay, hold on a minute, go back. So I'm going to do this. Okay, still there. Did I completely got rid of it? Okay, hold on a minute. Once again, do this. Okay, finish it off with this. All right, uh, try to uh, finish, correct this. And the way to correct it is like this. Okay, I'll show you that. Load the mask itself in, in itself. So mask and mask method. Okay, I'm going to explain it in the advanced session, by the way, in the separate uh, masking session. Load mask and mask. Because the thing is, what most people don't realize is that the mask you're creating that is in progress is already one of the most advanced masks that you have available. So why not use it to correct this here? So what I do is click here. You see that? Ah. This is, is gone. And then do the rest. So now, again, I load lights to have copy for this. Okay, now I'm going to fix it only with this. And I'm, and I'm done. 
Okay, and if you look here, it's like this. In a few steps. Okay, this is something that I didn't intend to show you here because this is part of the advanced masking technique session. And I'm going to show you different variations on this technique, but it's something that I, I, I'm sure uh, has never been presented before by anyone. Any questions about this part? Is, does, it sound, does it look exciting or do you think, oh, it's not, nothing, nothing special? Very brilliant. Very brilliant. <laughs> it's okay. amazing, Joel. Very, very interesting. Okay, but this is just a simple image. You, you might want to see how I do this with very uh, complicated images. Then this technique is going to be even more elaborate, more advanced. But again, I'm sorry to say that's going to be a paid session, a, a separate paid session, okay, in, in May. But that's something that actually doesn't belong to the panel. And that's why I'm doing that, okay? But to get an impression, this is how it goes. So now back to the other image, the final image with the, uh, that I wanted to demonstrate. It's not this one, but it is this. That's going to be the tree number one. So if you guys will load it, so this, uh, this, I promise this is going to be the last part. So it's already taking how, how long? Two and a half hours or? I'm the haven't noticed, it's gone very fast. Okay. So uh, I promise I won't go beyond three hours, okay? Okay, this image. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to go into this uh, explanation, but uh, I think you've already seen this on YouTube, okay? But the figure ground and the edge detection and the, in, the annotation about dark, et cetera, et cetera. Light to dark, dark to light. Okay, I'm not going to go into this because you can find it on YouTube, okay? So please guys, can you open up this image if you want? Because it's easier to follow there. Yeah. All right, so. You will see that I've also created the selections. If you if you click on there, can you find uh, those selections, everyone? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. I'm still struggling with all the controls that I find all over the place here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm loading selection for. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> not that. Okay. Always start with the black and white conversion, of course. Okay. Neutral. There we go. And if you've seen the final result of this image, you would, you would know that uh, this has been darkened quite considerably, but without any loss of details, by the way. And this is going from light to dark, from, le from left to right, and from dark to light, from right to left, okay? So first of all, what I wanna do is to bring this tree out, and the way to do that is to remove the contrast and background and not just darken it. Because if you darken it, so let's say like this, I would load the background, and I would, let's say, do a darkening but creating depth from, let's say, bottom to top, let's say D2. And once again, and then from top to bottom, also with the D2 and D3 again. So the thing is, you see, it's been darkened, but there's still so, mu so many details in there, right? It's actually quite distracting. So you see, just darkening it doesn't do the job, okay? So instead of doing that, first remove the contrast. So here I go, load, sorry, it's already loaded. So I go straight to global adjustment, my favorite uh, kind of uh, preset over there. Low key, do this, one pass. Ag again, load it, background, low key. Second pass, okay. And I think this should be enough. I can go with two and a half, so I'm going to do it again. Three, sorry, background, low key. Now stick with 50%, apply. So it has been removed of all its contrast, but the thing is, it looks flat, right? It looks very weird and flat, right? Have you guys already done this? Okay, so oh, now, no, no, no. So now to bring back the detail, I'm going to add the shadows back. So load selection, background, go to creating depth. Now from top to bottom, the dark, let's say D2. 
it already looks different, right? Yeah. It, it looks more natural from bottom to top as well. D2. You see, you lose that strange look of it, that flat look. Okay, okay, I've darkened it too much, by the way, <laughs> but it's just to give you an idea. So, darkening this way is something different from darkening just by darkening it. Always remove the contrast and then darken it. It also applies to when you try to bring highlights into something. Try to darken it first and to remove the contrast because then <laughs> it's easier to add light and shadows to something that's uh, that, that, that's actually high contrast, okay? That That is the way that you can control it. So, have you guys already done this? Yeah. No. Yes. That, okay, I'll give you guys a few seconds. <clears throat> okay, in the meantime, I'm going to drink something here. Okay, so I hope you guys uh, know the principle of removing contrast first, then darkening it or lightening it, and that there's a big difference between doing that than just merely darkening or lightening it, okay? Because then you keep the contrast as it is, and you might end up with something completely different. Okay, so I've done that. Now, let's play with a tree. Okay, my favorite uh, pastime, playing with the trees. Uh, <laughs> tree, this. Okay, so go to selections, select tree, no branch. Okay. <clears throat> Click OK. So the thing is what I want to do is the following. What I want to do is to go from light to dark that way. Okay, but I will only want to affect this specific area, the, the midsection. Okay. So what I can do now, once I've loaded that, is to grab your marquee tool. Click on subtract over here. See that? Then just roughly indicate where you want to be. This part needs to be selected, needs to be targeted. So I'm going to subtract it like this. Okay? So now go from left to right with light. Okay, and then from right to left with dark. So here I go from left to right with let's say uh, medium because if, if, if I use medium then it would cover 50 percent that's roughly up to here correct so that should be enough mm -hmm. so medium uh, L2 okay let's go crazy with L3 okay like that of course you see this thing you know that doesn't look right right so reselect it again and make sure because I'm going to do restore now that the, uh, the layer with that with the last adjustment with the final adjustment is right on top of the layer without the adjustment that's this layer all right and then you can restore it so you can what you can do is just remove the, the middle layer or just merge it down doesn't matter okay so now I do restore with extra small from bottom to top and top to bottom bottom to top top to bottom and there it is you see that and by doing that, you'll see that there's no edge visible. Okay. Have you guys tried it out? Yeah. Okay. So that is very that. cool. Say that again. That was very cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I built a panel to, to make it <laughs> to make it look very effortless. You know, I mean, the thing is, you can also do all those things manually. You know, but it's it, it's so it's so much more time consuming, you have to do all those steps in between. Can you just do that last bit once again? Sure again, yeah, sure. So I'm going to go back. Let's say, uh, so I've loaded the selection of the tree without the branch, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, I just want to target this area roughly, okay? Light to dark. So I just take my marquee tool here, set it to subtract the third uh, icon over there. Then just roughly indicate what you want to have. So subtract that, subtract that. Okay, then you have this. Ah. Yeah. All right. Now go from left to right with the M medium coverage 50% up to here with light, like this. Do it a few times, 
let's go even crazier than before, like this, okay? So I've, tr I've, three, I've done three passes, this one. If you want to restore it and get rid of that crazy edge there, okay? You have to uh, merge down two layers, yeah? Because here's the last layer without the adjustment. Or you can just remove those with, by deleting it. But I'm going to merge it down here. So, so right on top of that, and now restore, restore, and you're done, okay? That's it. Is this clear? Yeah, so now another one. Now I'm going to brighten up the ferns over there. So here I have the ferns, okay. And of course you need to do that for the entire tree, okay? Because uh, I, I just uh, do, did this demonstration with that part, but to make it look good, you need to do that with the entire tree. So I'm going to load the ferns, load selection. Ferns, okay, those ferns over there. I want to make it white, okay, very bright. So I'm going to click on, uh, so basically I can now go with uh, creating depth as well. I can also go with Pro Tools, by the way, but I'm going to use creating depth. So I'm going to go from bottom to top with uh, light. Let's say L3, 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 so three passes, and then top to bottom. Just try to follow along if you can. L3, L3, okay, that was two passes. This is three. Now from right to left, a few. Let's say L3. Um, if you do the Pro Tools, by the way, it's going to be even brighter. It's even faster, okay? But I'm going to do it like this, okay? All right, so something like that. So you see that, but if you zoom in, you will see that oh. it actually looks a little bit strange right i mean especially here around the edges okay if i'm going to exaggerate i'm going to do it again i'm going to do it even more let's say from top to bottom but even more uh, brightening yeah something like that you see it looks a little bit strange especially if you make it even whiter so but you can restore it but the thing is what i said before i said okay you have to restore with the last layer without the adjustment meaning something like where is it over there? This one, I think. Okay, this is the last layer without adjustment. But if you would do it with that, you would get a black edge. So in this case, I would say you have to restore it with the layer that has the that you want to restore with that doesn't look like that strange that doesn't result in a strange and unnatural transition. So basically, what I'm doing now is to find the layer that I want to restore with, and I think I like this mid gray. You see that? That's somewhere halfway over there. So I'm going to restore it all the way up to this layer. Okay, so not to this layer, to the original layer, but to this one. So I'm going to merge it down a few layers. Hold on a minute. I'm just going to get rid of those layers. Just delete those. All right. So now it's right on top of my target layer. Okay. Instead of the original layer without the adjustments. So load selection of the ferns again. And now you can do uh, this, okay, the extra small. I always start with extra small to make it look a little bit more subtle. Okay, see. Okay, now I'm going to have a look and see if it's already changed. And you see now that you can do this. See that I have restored some of those parts, see that? I can also do a, a small because it's a little bit, it's not enough, I think. You see that? It has the silvery glow now. And you can also do it from, from another direction, but I hope you, you see what I mean. Because if I did it with, with this layer, with the original layer, then it would look it would have looked like, hold on a minute, like this. So this is the original layer without the adjustment. So if we, we do a restore with that, it wouldn't be the same. Okay, so let's do a restore. See, it would look much darker. Actually, almost black again, see that? So in this case, you can choose the actual target layer for the restore, instead of going all the way down to the original layer. Do I make any sense here? Yeah. Absolutely, so, yes. Can right. you explain the restore again? I am fuzzy on what that does. 
Okay, so the re okay, the restore what it does. Okay, let me try doing that with this part of the image, okay, because that's easier. So let me get rid of those. Okay, let's say that, uh, okay. I'm going to, you can also do this by the way. You can also indicate a target selection. So just click the more key tool, do this. Okay, say I wanna lighten it from left to right and darken from right to left. So now, Make sure that you're inside of the uh, tree without the branch. And now tree, no branch and intersect. You can also do it like that. Okay, then you have this. Now go from uh, right to left with lights, okay. Okay, that's too large, hold on a minute. I have to go with this, with the medium. Okay, okay, I'm doing it in the wrong direction, okay. Glad you guys pointed that out. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, now I'm screwing it up. Hold on a minute. See, that's what you get from unexpected questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Again, light to dark. Okay, so the objective of restore is to bring back the original tonality, the original image information that you had before you did all the adjustments. And you have to do that, why? Because else you would end up with something like this, right, with a strange edge. So in order to do that, you have to make sure that your last layer without the adjustment is right on top of the layer that doesn't contain that adjustment. That is this layer, right? Because here is where I started the adjustments, okay? So I'm going to restore it with this layer, not with this layer, because then you'll still see the edge. So it brings back the information inside this last layer that I've, uh, that I've uh, stored in, in here, in this layer, okay? So I'm going to merge it down, two layers, merge layer, merge layer. So now it's right on top of that layer without the adjustment, okay? So now I can do a restore. So I'm bringing back the information in that layer in the original layer in here. So that's what I'm doing with extra small like this and from top to bottom as well. So you bring back that original information. That's what you do. Is that clear? Very good, beautiful. Yeah? Yes. Okay guys, that was it. I mean, I've, I've already run very late. So uh, I hope you guys didn't mind that. And uh, finally, I wanna ask you, do you have any questions? Hopefully not too, ma too many. <laughs> So actually, Joe, my only question is again about uh, maybe being in, included in the advanced course. Send you an email, you said. Yeah, please send me an email. I, I see there are also a lot of uh, uh, chat information in here. But please, if you can, put it in an email if you want to join the advanced session. Because usually, uh, I, I'm uh, I'm not going to invite uh, uh, people again for the next session. But I think uh, it has been so much fun today that I'm going to add you guys to the 40 other <laughs> people that are already there. <laughs> if you don't mind that. No, thanks, Joe. Yeah. Really amazing. Okay. Thank you. Great class, Thank Joe. Thank you very much. Joe, so do, you have any idea, do you have any idea how much you'll be charging for the May class on the selections? Uh, that's going to be in May. I think I'm going to charge maximum $100 for two and a half hours. But you, you know that when I say two and a half hours, it's going to be actually five hours, right? So. <laughs> right. <laughs> if today is any indication. Right? So and you'll be, you'll be emailing us about that? Yes, please do that. If you, if you are interested, please email me. I can put you on the list. So you're going to okay. be the first one to attend that. Okay? Right. okay. Oh, Thanks very much for making this uh, possible today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe. Uh, one Thank question. You. The yes? version I have is 1.0, and the version I'm using is 1.2. Uh, I just I don't have that extra small for the restore. Okay, that's in the 1.2 version. So uh, uh, that that was uh, who? Mike, right, Mike? Mark. Yeah. Mark. Mark yeah. Bernstein, right? Bernstein, yes. Yeah, I still know you from the New York City workshop. Okay. So s send me an email. I'll resend the email to you for the latest version. Okay. Thank you, man. Great to see you again, Mark. You too. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoy it, and hopefully to the next time. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Joe. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Joey.